Hello everyone, my name is Brian, that's my brother Adam. We are back, we are the Factional Fight Brothers, we're back in Worm. Uh, Adam is back from vacation, he's been gone for two weeks, man, that was, how was your vacation? That was a long vacation. It was a long vacation, but it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of fun. So what did you, what did you do? Is something like you were, you were out in the wilderness... You were fishing, you were uh, in like a cabin or something, you were uh, out on boats. Uh, it yep. pretty much sounds like what I did in Worm. <laughs> yeah, it was like, uh, it was a pretty far out there place, you know, like uh, no civilization whatsoever. There were no roads to get to the lake, so they had to fly us in by water plane. <laughs> it was... Uh, yeah, it was quite an experience, but the fishing was great. Oh, that's you know, good. One of the one of the best walleye spots in the whole province. So, yeah. Wow. So great. maybe just as good as worm fishing. Uh, huh? <laughs> I'd have to say probably a little bit of step up from the worm fishing. <laughs> yeah. For lots Mr. Of Mr. Saria, except Adam didn't have a sexy ladies. <laughs> there, me and Casper. <laughs> oh. Well, well, I did you... get to listen to some of your stream on the way back. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Back. Not sure if you saw them, but uh, you were there in spirit, right, guys? He was there in spirit. Huh? So on the way up oh. on our on the first stream where it was like just you. Um, and I was trying to come in with my voice, but what ended up happening was at any time that I drove out of a town and my internet went down to like one bar or less, I, I just wasn't coming through. So every time that like I come into like a little town and my bars went up to like my internet bar went up to about three bars, I would like try to chime in and say something, but it was few and far between. <laughs> Yeah, there's not that many, there's really not that many cities uh, or little towns not when you're driving up, up north Canada. Yeah, uh, so, up there. so how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Are you, is everybody uh, in, in Worm able to play today? I see, of course, Mr. Saria, uh, Serene, Reagan Nation, Geras Drangi, <laughs> Griffo, <laughs> Adam is a stud. <laughs> <laughs> Catsper, Ashen Drake, Cranking, Scuff Grim. How are you guys all doing? Chez. Chez. Cooking dog food at the moment. What is cooking dog food? How does that work? Is that like cooking real dog food? I know there's some people out there who actually cook for their dogs. Oh, Mr. Sorry. The prank for shoot he went well. That sounds good. I still have to hear about what exactly you were doing for that. Uh maybe something right. similar to what you were uh showing me on Discord. And Chez, you're mining in worm while you tidy the house. Oh, got the mother coming to stay for a couple of weeks while your dad does mm. some work in the house. Ah. Well, at least you get to worm. <laughs> While you do that, Casper, you're propping up your eyelids with your toothpicks to keep them <laughs> open. Why? Did... <laughs> with toothpicks? Boy, Cats was telling me her sleeping schedule is like way off. She's like waking oh, up no. at, in the in the late night. She basically, the, you know, her day is the night. Basically, reverse right the now. reverse the days. Oh, that sucks. I mean, unless it's okay if you're not going out and uh, it it helps with that schedule. Let's see. Uh, mm, I haven't been to bed yet and it's 5 p.m. Yikes. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's good. And <laughs> Griffo, when are you guys going to do shoeies? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you pro we probably won't. I would say, yeah. I'll, I'll never say never, but uh, right, it's it's a fairly low probability. <laughs> <laughs> even you did one, and you don't even stream. Did you just? 
randomly do one? <laughs> There's always a probability regulation. So always, as, as Adam's the math guy, he'll probably uh, know a little more. But the probability, <laughs> how how low would the probability be, Adam? Oh, it'll probably be pretty low. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even, well, even the chances of us taking shots are probably pretty low. <laughs> That's what happens when you get older. <laughs> oh, you have it on YouTube. Oh, okay. That's cool. At least you have it somewhere, Griffo. <laughs> Did Chewies all be devastated? <laughs> were, you, were you as devastated when Michio did his five Chewies? On Did one stream, five it was like a, a lot of oh shoeies. <laughs> oh boy! I mean, th there's part of it that's just like you're drinking out of a shoe, and but then there's the other part of like look at all that alcohol that's getting wasted, that's getting sucked <laughs> into the sole of the shoe. <laughs> I was worried about the wasted alcohol <laughs> more than he's drinking out of a shoe. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, <laughs> and Serena, yeah, it's not healthy. It's for sure not healthy. <laughs> and the, the shoe must be absolutely wasted. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely more than one issue with the whole shoey thing. <laughs> <laughs> Think about what the alcohol is stripping out of the shoe and I guess yeah. into your mouth. <laughs> the American version. The dirty sock. Oh. Imagine drinking, you pour it into the oh, sock, it streams out and it's, you're... It's that word ugh. stripping again. That's been a problem. <laughs> oh, is that what... <laughs> Auto mod. Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, Zed Cobra, <laughs> how you doing? So yeah, great start. <laughs> Shoey talk <laughs> and uh, dirty socks. But let's go. Let's go into the game, right? Because it's been right. a while. And, and Adam, you came back sort of last week. Right. Um, I guess you came back last Sunday? It was on or the Sunday. I, I was able to get then you home left well after the stream. Again. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Another vacation. And then you came back. Oh, my God. <laughs> Retro and the Worm Online official crew. How are you guys doing? Thanks for the How raid. was the stream there? Thanks so much for that raid. We we're just getting started, so this is perfect. And we were, we just finished right. talking about uh, how things are going. Adam is back from vacation, so he's back mm -hmm. after two weeks. Two weeks of being gone, so almost we haven't seen him for th two and a half weeks, something like that. Because I believe we we streamed on a Thursday. Thank you so much for the follow, kind Rushe. And Art says, we waited for you. Thanks for waiting for us. That's awesome. You waited we, for you us. You know, we, we were trying to get started earlier, but uh, Brian was having trouble connecting to the network. Uh, there must have been some routing issue or something. There was an issue oh, with uh, my guess, anyways, that I couldn't connect to the Worm server. So uh, I could connect to the Worm test server, but I couldn't connect to the Worm to the live server for some reason. It just had a network connection timeout, which to me as a network guy probably means that uh, there was some sort of DNS entry issue somewhere between myself and the Worm live server. And it just fixed itself, but it took like 30 minutes. Anyway, it wasn't the server, it wasn't my computer, it wasn't anything, it was some sort of connection pathing issue through the internet. Anyway, uh, oh, thank you for that. Oh, you did that. So a couple things that we did this week. Uh, first, we'll talk about the stream itself. The stream itself, we finally have filter face filters for Adam. It finally mm. worked. We finally figured this out. Adam, you're currently a baby. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm a baby. <laughs> he doesn't even notice. <laughs> I can't even tell. Oh, I see it now. Okay, I, I gotta, I gotta learn this new uh, interface so I know when things are happening. Oh, oh, oh my God. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, the same mystery face as last week. So I forgot to change oh, that you, up. You have Actually, a chance to change it. <laughs> we get one more week of deer, guys. You get one more week of this deer. Uh, <laughs> right. 
we we did so much <laughs> try in the back end to change everything and it, to you to you guys it would probably seem almost pretty much the same but it's like to adam completely it's different completely now. different well to me it's completely different <laughs> he's using different and programs it's... he's using he's using different a uh, layout and setup uh it's <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's really crazy saying, the turtle is very funny though that i i, I thought that was great the turtle is just great <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's probably won't come back for a while, but it, it's there. It's available. Um anyway, so so the stream's a little bit more more uh, uh the the stream is definitely more stable and robust at this moment. And thank you so much for the follow guys. Goth Druid, uh Zet Norking. Thank you so much for the follow. We're just getting started in Worm, so we got lots to do today. Uh, but what you're seeing right now is sort of an overview of our deed. So this is our deed. We have our, of course, workstation house, which to us, or at least to me, seemed like enough. That's why I haven't like gone crazy on the deed. We've been using the rest of it for farming. I given Willow, who lives on our deed, uh, over here. So she started building and finished the first floor. What you also see, though, is our alliance. So over here, you have Antirg. I don't know if you're around Antirg. Uh, and he, there's some sort of boat being moved over here. So that's their place. And then further out, so this is this is you, Cats. This is Casper's place right here. And you can see all of this rock. It looks like they started, uh, you guys started I guess surface mining, digging and surface mining, getting ready for the kingdom. Uh, we are, you started decimating the place. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's great. Go over and check it out. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it's been a really busy two weeks in, uh, mm. in real life. In real it's life, been yeah. really busy. I haven't had a lot of time to catch up on, on the streams and I, I can go in and out. So this is the perfect time for me because I can just forget about work, forget about all the, the issues. And, and hopefully if you guys are the same and you have work and you're busy, I mean, this is a perfect, perfect Sunday to just. Willa lives with you. I got to send her an angry PM now. Griffo says, <laughs> why, why an angry PM? I don't yes, know. We're on melody. We're Should on melody. I... Do you want to tell us the story behind that angry PM Griffo? I'd be curious to know. <laughs> cats has neighbors now fates that would that it that it the world is going to end oh that's it the world's going to end. she was supposed to live with you oh my god i i will oh. send her an angry pm on your behalf <laughs> and uh i will leave it on her doorstep actually a pm i'll i'll make a note of <laughs> And I'll drop it onto her doorstep. Do we even have a press yet? I don't even think we have a press. We have a press. I made a press. Oh, no, okay. a press? Not, no, I made, made a, a fruit, fruit press. press. Sorry. You made a fruit press. <laughs> I will have to make a press, yes. Just just for you, Griffo. I'll make a press. I'll work out the details of making some paper. And leave the note. I don't, I don't even remember where she put her door. I think it was this tile. A fruit note. We can do a fruit note. We can create lots of, how about lots of sprouts? And then each one I'll just rename and then put them in a specific line order that she can read. <laughs> like a, a message right. of. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't have my shoes on, do I? I gave my shoes away. Was it the last stream? Yeah, it was the last stream. I gave my shoes away and my character still is... <laughs> shoeless, shoeless. <laughs> i think i'll keep them that way for today uh other things that we did so we actually did a lot in the game uh, as far as mm. uh what so we're going to list a, a bunch of stuff uh, accomplishments what have you guys accomplished let's say in the last uh, week or so. two since adam's been gone but at least my list here and, and what i've done i finally got my first 60 skill Ooh. And that is, I mean, if you look at my character right now, my first 60 skill is leatherworking. So I finally got it. Let me bring this back to you guys. Right here. And thank you for that baby face. Uh, Reganation. Leatherworking is 60. Oh, uh, we're the baby face no, we're faction of Fight Brothers. 
So I, I mean, I have gotten it up to 62 since then, but that was a, that was a big milestone for me. I was able to get mm. 60, uh, tool belts. I was able, uh, yes. I started on my first saddle, lots and lots of armor that I've been imping to get to 60. So that's, it's, it's been great. <laughs> like playing. Oh, and cats, you got 23 body strength. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, Limewood, you finally got bees to move into your beehive. That's awesome. I know antier has been trying to do that a lot. He's got a bunch mm. of beehives waiting or ready. Yeah, and let's see what else. So, I mean, I, 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 after I got to 60, I switched over to fine carpentry, got fine carpentry to 40, and then I switched over to masonry and got my masonry to 40, and I'm on my way uh, to have masonry to 50. This is sort of my clip or my clip. This is sort of what I've been enjoying in worm this time around is, uh, looking at the different skills that could help, uh, myself and all this stuff and, and, uh, and trying to become master at it. And next, what I'm going to be trying to do is, is wood cutting, which is actually really hard where we live because we have no trees. I, this is why you can see here, I planted a whole bunch of trees and I'm just waiting for them to grow. Mm. And you can see here, I think they're just, most of them are mature at this point. Maybe some of them are still young, especially the pine trees, which is another thing that I did was because we have no trees, it was, uh, I think myself and Willow went out, found a pine tree forest and went crazy. So she picked tons of sprouts and then I chopped trees to tr and I only got my wood cutting to 36. But after that, we brought that back wood because we had no logs. We we're running out of logs. And then I planted this whole forest here, which mm, is pretty large. I, I think it's a 10 by, at least a 10 by 10 area. So at least a hundred trees. Oh, that's good. That's good. We need that. At least a hundred trees. So let's let's take a oh, look. Sipaku my... says he got seventy mind logic today. Never gonna pan fill again in my life. Oh. <laughs> That's insane. Seventy <laughs> mind logic. That is insane. What is that? Uh, eight Q actions? Is that eight? Or is that seven? Three, four, five. <laughs> I can't remember. Six, seven, eight. That's eight. It's eight. There wow. you go. Yeah, yeah, so here's here's my little forest. Congrats on that. Yeah, congrats. That's crazy. I will be and chopping this down once it's uh, all very old. says, just started playing Worm a week ago now. Whoa. Very cool, very cool. How are you Welcome liking worm? worm? It's been one week. This is a perfect venue for you to... to tell us i'd be really curious to know uh the and ups the downs panfill panfill there Ad adam would be Panfil. a much better person to answer that question because <laughs> he's done it so much <laughs> yeah yeah pan filling is um the art form of <laughs> filling pans <laughs> filling pan it's exactly what it sounds like it it's is the art form exactly of like. filling pans <laughs> The idea is this, that, um, okay, so where do I even begin with this? The reason why you would fill pans, there's, there's a couple, mm. but one of them would be to get your hot food cooking skill up. Um, but a lot of people use it for secondary purposes, and that's um, here's Sipico using it to get his mind logic up. But uh, it's basically through hot food cooking. So the idea is you have, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll scale it down a little bit for everybody. Imagine you have a forge and in that forge, you put a hundred pans, like you just fill it with pans. Um, mm -hmm. And then you take a hundred meat and a hundred veggies that are in your inventory and it's you like, sit like there this. and you just fill, yeah, you just fill the pans, like just one meat, one veggie into every single pan. You just spend your time filling it up. And this is while the forge or, or oven or whatever is off. Um, once you have all the pans filled up, then you take a kindling and you light the oven. And just as things are going to start turning into the meals, you turn on your sleep bonus. 
all the meals get popped all at once and for every meal that gets created you get a chance at a skill tick either in hot food cooking or in any of the um you know characteristic skills so um now take that one oven with 100 pans and imagine a room that's filled with possibly 20 ovens possibly 50 ovens each one has a hundred pans and you spend your day just filling the pans like while they're all off you just fill the pans with you know some ins insane amounts of food and uh once you're all done filling then <laughs> you just light them you take your tea you just light them all up and then you turn on your sleep bonus and they just pop off like insanity uh <laughs> You know, if your hot food cooking is one to begin and you fill, let's say I've done, I've done up to 50 forges before and you light up 50 forges all filled with pans that are completely mm. filled and ready to go, your skill is going to be like 60 in hot food cooking or 70 in hot food cooking after, by the end of it or something. Uh, yeah, it's, get it's insane. <laughs> characteristic skill gains as well that's why cooking doesn't rely on hot food cooking anymore as its primary <laughs> ability or well, i guess it's the primary ability not it's right. uh it's not all or nothing type of ability anyway so a okay, is you're you blame cats per for making you play worm or for you starting to play worm been binge binge playing from the start <laughs> so that nice. i assume that means that you're enjoying it or at least finding it interesting enough to play a lot. <laughs> cats. Um, <laughs> Holly yeah. blames Casper as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, so Holly Dragon, you're saying that's some intense min maxing. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's what a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people find the whole idea of, of of improving how you you skill up or the ability to to maximize the skill gain that you have. I mean, we do videos on that in the past. We talk about it a lot. But it's more about like if you're wanting to become a master, you know, anything, a master leather worker, master blacksmith, then a lot of that isn't just like getting your skill up. A lot of that is actually the skill that you do in the game as a player to make yourself the better blacksmith or whatever, like the, the setup that you have and where you're placing forges and where you're placing belt, belt storage. And all this stuff also takes part in your becoming the master of that profession. So a lot of, like the min maxing and that sort of thing, although it might be different in games like uh, oh, where, where fighting is, is the main thing. In Worm, it's just like part of the journey. Uh, it's the skill in your mind of how you're going to set up everything and and uh, how you're going to imp, imp things or create things and all that stuff. And uh, it's more ingrained in the in the Worm game itself, anyway. The parser says, 100, how quaint. <laughs> <laughs> Referring to the 100 That's what you were pens. saying. Yes. 100 <laughs> pants, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was... Uh, and uh, Sipik just... was saying... He used a forge with seven backpacks and each had 37 fry frying pans. That, you know, I used to do that. I used to have it set up that way. Um, you get more backpacks in each forge or whatever. Um, but I did find the extra inventory sort of organization was a little bit more difficult. I, I, I was able to fill much quicker if it was just 100 pans. So I switched my setup. And that's why the reason why worm players are fat. <laughs> J Popper Worm says, we're trying to keep the new player, not drive him away screaming in fear, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, how are you doing there, Archaicus? <laughs> You're still so around, right? The pen help. And that goes along with, uh, is it better to fill pans in the oven or forge or in your pocket than place in the furnace? Okay, so those two go kind of go together. Um, and the answer is it depends. So it depends on what your skill is and what your goal is and what your target is. Um, so for Sipaku, whose goal was specifically to get mind logic, 
my belief, and I could be wrong, but my gut tells me that the best situation is to try to lower the difficulty as much as possible. Um, make it an easy, easy action. So like make it a, a meal that has the lowest difficulty. Um, and in that situation, you'll want to use ovens because ovens have a lower difficulty than forges. Um, and, th and the reason is because your characteristic gains don't skill up based on the difficulty of the action. I, I, and th again, this is a gut feeling. I could be wrong about this. Um, but if your goal is to get hot food cooking up, then the strategy is to try to keep the difficulty of the action closest to your skill, maybe just a bit under your skill. Um, so if your skill is like 40, you'll want to make the action 30 or 35 difficulty or something like that. Um, and using forges can help adjust the difficulty because that'll add 15 to the difficulty. So if you're using a 10 difficulty meal, well, putting it in a forge will make that action 25 difficulty. You can sort of adjust things like that. And uh, that will optimize your hot food cooking game. Um, and it's better to probably fill in the forges. Uh, however, it's the person who puts the item into the forge, like, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you're the one who puts the pans in the forge. So what people do is they'll fill all the pans and then they'll spend time taking all the pans out and putting them back in just because it's the person who puts the pans in the forge who gets the skill. Right. All right. And, and don't we all miss Adam? Adam can explain all of this stuff, <laughs> the different the different ways of uh <laughs> of doing food cooking or all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Hopefully that was good. And and Arcacus, yeah, you're trying to find some oak. So you're trying to uh, find an oak tree to chop down, I'm assuming, so you can make handles uh for the present. Mm. Oh, for the present. For now, you're trying to make handles for I'm assuming some tools. Uh, but as far as what we're going to do is that we know that we have this chess match that it's going to be against me and Adam. And so mm -hmm. the last time Adam was here, he had deeded some land. I haven't seen it yet. So we're going to go see it and we're going to use that land to build our chessboard. And so what we've decided to do is make it out of marble and slate. You saw us last time creating uh, or getting, I think, marble. Hey, Antirk, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. Uh, hey, Antirk. And we are going to build ourselves a giant chessboard, and we'll, we'll show you guys what that's like. Whoops. I hope it only pulls slate. So how much slate and marble do you feel we need, Adam? It's not that much, is it? Um, I, I thought it Here's was about my vision. Four, isn't it four per tile? And then we'll need the statues. Yeah. Can you, can you make four per tile? Slate? Is it four per tile? Or are we doing Something bricks? Like can we do brick? Or does it have to be slate slabs? Sorry. I think it has to be slate slabs. What? Okay. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll just take everything no. we have. It has to be marble slabs. Has That's to be marble slabs. Pretty sure. I think so, slate might have a brick version and a slab version. They do. Right. Which one goes well with the marble? <laughs> Guess we'll find right. out. Let me just take we'll everything we have. <laughs> put one down. I, slab. I know slab was smooth. Yeah. Slab was smoother than... Then uh, the brick one, the brick one is more like, you know, cobblestone bricks, but slate version. Actually, no, that's not true, is it? Slate was uh, was still like a brick, little cobblestone bricks, but more straight. So now I have to find out, does brick or does slab... Slate go with marble better on a chessboard. Has anybody made a giant chessboard and knows that answer to that? You, or should we just do better. some? Uh... That would be smart. <laughs> <laughs> Let's I was like, do. Why don't we just put them down in the world and see what? <laughs> Let's do the world Please version since we're here. 
All right. Do we need anything else? Here's a question before Wait, we uh, start do, off you have, on our journey. You have five crates? Yes. Uh, oh, I know what we need. We need to go grab some food. I am going to, thanks to Antirg, we have a yes. communal alliance grocer. Oh, you and do so, that. I'm going to grab water because I don't have any water. Let's see. So we can fill up these barrels with water. Well, maybe I'll fill up some with the food. So what's great here is that, so here's his grocer, has a larder, inside the larder, I'm just going to take one little snippet of this, which should fill my CCFP, and then let's see some of these filler breakfasts, breakfast. So people are saying oh. slab, slab use looks better. I just want to comment on a, on a comment that happened oh, a little bit earlier. Holly Dragon 10. said, I'm very slow to grind natural methods about things so far. I might feel different about a second or third character someday. Um, I, I'm going to tell you exactly when you're going to start feeling different. Uh, Ooh, and, and okay. The, tell the me. The natural methods, the natural methods, perfectly fine. Uh, I'm not like that's the way we've been doing it. I'll be honest. Like I feel that we've been really working on things in more of a natural way. I'm not. I mean, I was. You were going on about your accomplishments. One of my accomplishments that happened in the last couple of weeks is I, I hit 50 mining. And I've really been doing that just by hitting rock. Like, I, I haven't been finding the optimal vein and just, you know, doing the whole... I, I've been sort of opening up our mind and mining the ceilings up high and uh, getting the iron that I need. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. just to get the 50, I was just stocking up on iron um, using a 20-quality pick. So it wasn't even a one-quality pick. Uh, Iro has finally got his priest up to... The level that you can start casting circle of cunning so we got nice some, some yeah circle of cunning on our stuff so that sort of helped out but um you know oh the road went I, I up that, here now so to get to my point which is when you're going to start looking at these min max things i don't think it's going to be on an alternate character what's going to happen is your skills are going to start going really slowly at some point like maybe around 70 you know you'll get your your the level of something that you really want into the 70s and you're going to start thinking maybe i kind of want to start pushing that skill get it to 80 or whatever like it, it'll come for the the gathering for sure you know i'm going to get to that point where i'm going to want to make 90 quality tools so i'm going to need 90 quality ore and i'm when i hit 70 or so that's when things get really slow and if you're just yeah. doing the natural way you're not going to get to 90 you actually have to put some some real thought into how you're going to get to 90 um in a time I mean, fashion. that's when you go from from it being a skill that you in uh that you've been using to the master at that skill right mm -hmm. so if you want to become the master of whatever you're doing fine carpentry or carpentry or low carpentries uh not the hardest skill to get up, but I mean, that's when you have to start putting some thought into how do I actually become this master right. of this profession? And, and it just what takes some, some ways that some tweaking. Right. And like even, even increasing your skill game by 30% or 40% or something like that really makes a difference in the long run because it takes hours and hours and hours to, to get through the grind to get to 90. It's, you can relate this though to real life really like imagine you were trying to become a like a the best cook ever you wouldn't just take the dullest blades on a knife and then start cooking and expect to be a master of cooking and create these masterpieces you would get a really really nice knife and then you would get a nice sharpener and you would sharpen those knives every time that you want to go in and 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 create something and and um worm is similar in that sense anyway mm -hmm. but when you're first starting off cooking it's like you're not thinking of these things you're not like i'm gonna get the best knife ever and <laughs> gonna spend three hundred dollars 
Where you really need the dull knife to get the skill, though. <laughs> somewhat, somewhat. We've uh, had imping actions. We've had we've had discussions about the way that imping works versus uh, harvesting there stuff. There is some kind of real life logic that you can use to justify why you would need a dull knife to get better. Because if, if you could, if you could make the perfect product using a dull knife, that takes some skill. Right, like it takes some thinking. Like, how am I gonna make it look good and do well? <laughs> and you have to like gain some mastery in order to Man. actually use a dull knife on it. Using a sharp knife, that's just too easy. I'm not gonna learn anything from that. So I don't know where this place is. So you're gonna okay, have to right. direct me here. Go up. You gotta go up this hill a little bit. Um, okay. This is on somebody's deed, so um, they've created this road that leads out of their deed. And you can't really cut through the maples, I don't think, without getting stuck. I see. Once we pass the maples, you hang a left. Yeah, the step sort of on this side is disappearing little by little. Yeah. Unfortunately. It's a very small step, this one. It uh, is very it's small. Not really producing, it wasn't really producing animals. Okay, hang a left I here. see you going this way. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you should be able to see it now. Okay. Now, this so, dugout area below, that's like to our yeah. left here, somebody had dug that, presumably for dirt or something, I'm not sure. They just came and dug this whole big area and then left? Yeah. Let's see what it looks like. Well, they but, came uh, here, they dug this out. And it, part of it is on the deed, but not... Not all of it. Wow. Okay. The actual deed's up here, on this ledge. Can I get up from here? And this was much higher when we first deeded. And I've been slowly digging, digging it down. Oh, and Jay Popper, you foolishly, you logged into Xanadu, you sold a Caravel, two Nars, and a Corbita. You sold wow. your boats. And now you is have that... to make replacements. Oh, what is this? <laughs> is that on the new servers? Because uh -huh. that sounds like a lot of silver. No, that's a uh, Xanadu. Oh, okay. So, Mr. Sorry, you had a huge step in harmony, and someone went and literally deeded it like 95% of it. You're talking hundreds of tiles of it yeah. and uh, deeded by one person. And they're stopping people from doing things on the, on the, uh, the step. Like you can't fight on it. You can't forge right. on it. Is that what you're saying? So why? So here's the site of our future chess match. Mm -hmm. And I know you were talking that you wanted to lower this dirt. So why do you want to lower it? Well, there was a couple options. It's right? pretty we could, flat. We could, have, we could have raised everything to make it flat. But I find that when you do that, it makes it look very unnatural. Right? Like, you get these dirt walls. Um, yeah. So I decided instead I'm just going to lower it. And that's going to keep the sides, like, after the flattening, like, the sides of flat. Beside the flat area, uh, the ground is going to be more gently sloped. Um, I kind of wanted it to go lo much lower than this, but I found that after 30 dirt, after digging 30 dirt, I hit the, the rock. Mm. So I didn't get really that far in terms of lowering it before the rock was there. How far do you want to go? And I, should the chessboard honestly... be somewhere else, like... Uh... I don't... How far does this land go? This way. Um, okay, so you see where the, the token is? And the altar? Yep. Uh, it's it's a, it's a 10 tiles in each direction from there. Uh, so you so can think of it in quarters. Here. And each quarter, each quarter of the deed has 10 by 10. Uh, let's see how far this way. I don't even know if I can get down this. Right. So it'll be near the bottom of that. Oh, it keeps there. going, coming up. Yeah, maybe another few tiles. 
So this one right here. Yeah. So this is the corner tile right here. Yeah. Ooh, right where wow. that tar okay. is. So it's pretty far. Patch, um, we just don't have the tar patch on the deed. It goes right in front of it. You're saying tar patch. Okay, so it's there. I see. So this is this corner. Mm -hmm. So if I just take a look here. And of course, uh, Adam called our deed the guilty, guilty thief. <laughs> <laughs> so because of, uh, I think that was Katzper's suggestion. <laughs> Right. Because <laughs> he had noticed that there was some one small crate on it. <laughs> I had had I my eye on this spot for for like a couple days. And when I came back to go deed it, the only difference was that there was a small crate on, on it with six clay in it. And it made me feel like a little bit guilty <clears throat> that I was deeding it. Because potentially that person came to put that... I don't, they could have easily put something that made it seem like they were going to deed it, but uh, I don't know. They put stuff down and I deeded it anyway. So I am the guilty thief. So donut kebab, in theory, you can create step, can't you? Yes, you can. So you do create yep. it with mixed grass. Yeah. So the, the grass that you pick out of grass, you can turn it into step. Which I think is confusing for a player that first starts, is that because they think they're picking grass and they can just plant it as grass, but really, in order to create grass, you have to turn that mixed grass into thatch, and then thatch will uh, will go down as grass or flowers, the which is the traditional way before we got thatching. Mm. But the benefit of thatch is that you can actually plant it inside of a house to create grass. If you're wanting to do an inside stables area. Whereas, yeah, flowers won't let you do that. Okay, so in saying that, let's work out a plan then. We don't want the chessboard to be on the token. So we don't want the token right. to... Whoop, Okay, so I I had thought that the best place for the for the uh, board would be starting from here-ish, this tile. So just next to the token. <laughs> yeah, going this direction. Okay, or let possibly me... this tile here. A couple tiles diagonally right. away. Uh, let me get naked. Give me a second. The way that I'm thinking is that each starting uh, from yeah. this tile, the deed is 10 tiles, 10 tiles towards the east and 10 tiles towards the north. So this one you're wanting. Okay. Yeah. And we only need an eight by eight, right? So we, if we start from here yeah. and go eight tiles that way and eight tiles that way and use a, have a one tile border around the whole thing, that'll be a 10 by 10 one. area, right? So you're wanting this tile that I just packed would be the corner. Yeah, that would be like then, the corner of the border. Yeah. So kind of, of the border. Of border. Oh, okay, I so see. Let me say it one more time, right? So like, you want a border like around the chess match. <laughs> well, you don't want to have it like the chess match being the edge of everything, because uh, right. then there's no room for audience or there's no room for people. Uh, yeah. So like. So it needs to be bigger eight. than an eight by eight. Okay. I'll say it one more time. The chessboard's an eight by eight, and if you make a oh, one tile border around it, it's a ten by ten. Ten by ten. This one. deed is exactly t like ten in each direction from the token, right? <laughs> so each the way I'm thinking about it is that each quarter of the deed is a ten by ten. Oh God. Okay. Of course, it's really bright, and I can't see quite what I'm doing here. So. You're saying if I walk out this direction, I will find the edge of the deed. Oh, Ten okay. Tiles away from the, yeah, token. So why this direction then? Because it looked very steep here. Right. The reason why this direction is because it is the least steep. Even the from deed. the other direction. Uh, the other direction has a big drop off. 
I mean, just. Uh, I see what uh, you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, there's a okay. So if you go this direction, there's a big drop off going towards the east, going this way. Look how deep this goes. It doesn't look it, but it's actually quite deep. It's probably, let's see, 29 plus 13 is one. So that's uh, plus another seven. Seven, 29, 13, that's 40, 50, 60. It's about 60, 70. Eight. Look how far it goes. <laughs> that's a lot, right? Whereas yeah, this is not that great. Area, right, that area over there goes out quite well. It's only the back corner where you were going. So really, this is our option. Now, this was the reason why I was digging it down instead of raising it up. Because raising it up would take a ton of dirt. Digging it down would give us a lot of dirt. Um, and also make it natural. But then I hit rock. All right. So... I started uncovering the rock. Maybe we can surface oh, mine okay. a little bit. So let's let's do it. Let's do it. What are your think thoughts? I'm gonna start uncovering the rock. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. Of this ten by ten area with our uh, right. not amazing yeah. skill. Not amazing skill. Yeah. <laughs> the surface mine is gonna be the part that kills us. And <laughs> so our chess match words. is now <laughs> a digging surface mining episode. Yeah. Uh, let's, I mean, which is actually great for us to get work done and discuss a whole bunch of stuff that we needed to talk about. And, uh, I know before Adam left, there was a bunch of these priest changes. We had mentioned it on our, uh, on our stream. I can't remember if it was the last one before you left because we really wanted to cover, uh, the priest changes, I guess this is more for veterans that know what priests are and how priests work. And these changes affected those people. And um, I'm not a priest. Adam's a priest. He knows stuff about being a priest. Oh, Mistress Arya, thanks so much for that, for that yeah. tier one sub. Thank you very much. And she said that earlier, my work with horses caused my most embarrassing war moment. Please uh -oh. do tell. I'm very curious now. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> Chess mass rescheduled for 2025. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, we, we we are determined to have this chess match. It will happen this uh, in September. So probably yes. later in September, but we will have this chess board up and running. We will have the, the match going. So, uh, yeah, be prepared that you will have to pick one of us see at first i was worried but i spent literally <laughs> two days with myself in an alt digging this area and i got a lot like quite a lot done uh i'm, I'm surprised I, I probably dug 3500 dirt or something like that um and it's not that much more really i would say there's probably less than a thousand more dirt to go okay to it all uncovered and then we just need to surface mine and then put some dirt back yeah, how many loves the changes that you can just dig to a pile? Man, that's going to make this a lot easier. What a self level, 94 quality, 105 beat. Plus the other dark. <laughs> yeah, no old servers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're doing this with our 40 quality shovels. <laughs> and our... Uh... Oh, man. I've noticed no sometimes... Place. All right, so I have it as a pile. There we go. <laughs> and our digging skill of 36. So maybe I'll actually get a little bit of skill, which is good. Yeah. Can't My complain about that. My digging has gone up quite a bit, actually. Let's see, what did it go to? 37. Yeah, it's it's... You're right that... Standing on the corner is a little bit more finicky than it used to be. Yeah. But you have to face that... inwards, and you still have to be uh, the closest to the corner that you want to dig. So, you know. And I've noticed facing in third-person mode is um, a little bit finicky. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Before we only had first-person mode, it was a lot easier for them for uh, to determine where these piles are going down. Anyway, so 
it's been three weeks. They made these priest changes. The priest changes uh, something about they changed the way that linking works within it. And then, Adam, you said you watched the video and we had mentioned it and forgot to explain what all of that was. Mr. So, Saria says, do you seriously want to know about the horse? <laughs> we do, do, do want to know. I think we do want to know. I think everybody Especially wants to know now. <laughs> before we get into this massive long rant about priests, because that's going <laughs> to... Adam's going to get into a massive long rant. <laughs> uh, I mean, are there screenshots to go along with this embarrassing moment? Because <laughs> that would be fun. You don't have to tell though. If it, if it's if it's that embarrassing, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to. Des Desjet, how are you doing? You're 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 in at a good time. Adam's about to go on a on a rant about priests, and we'll we'll see how this discussion goes. Uh, I know priests can be a touchy subject for some and for others. You know, we're just sitting here like me, like I don't know <laughs> what are priests. Yes, yeah, Sipaku, we're going to get does... to that as well. <laughs> we have Favorite. okay, so we have we have a discussion about priesting and how the linking works, and that will that will transition into the sacrificing changes that they're looking at, or are they, I think they're just looking at them right now, and then we can have a discussion about that, and uh, and, and I'm sure that'll lead off to something else. So. <laughs> So, Mr. Saria, you were breeding for Draca for about one and a half months. You see all kinds of horses, even named ones like Dream Master. <laughs> Rick, Rick Sif, anyone able to get into the game? Uh, which kind of problem are you having? Because I had problems this morning as well, dealing with, uh, I believe, a DNS issue where I couldn't, from my location, connect to the live servers. It just had a network error, but then I saw other people having issues with the client itself, uh, which is usually... Can't connect to update server. Okay, so that's to the, the launcher. update server. That's the launcher. My guess is that. that make sure that you have worm closed even in the taskbar, uh, and then I would rename... You'd have to find the worm folder and then just rename your, um, I mean, this could not be the problem, but if, if, you, if right. you do an experiment where you rename the folder with the jar files in them and then reload worm and see if that fixes it, mm. it could just be stuck. Like it, it can't, what, what the update server tries to do is it tries to verify those jar files with your client and the server and then see if there's anything like i don't know ch uh, check some or something see if there's anything uh altered about it but if those files are are locked in some way then the update server can't do anything and it just sort of hangs or fails okay so here's the continuation of the embarrassing moment yeah, uh, one of the alliance. Wait. So when I was moving to celebration, I had died, and some of the alliance spent quite a few hours trying to help me locate my body. One of the alliance members was, "Hey, baby, when you're done getting all that stuff off your body, do you mind if I have it to bury in my cemetery?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure. No weird now necrophiliac crap with my body." So they said, "Oh, no worries. We have all the who's who in our cemetery." Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. We got Ping, we got Deuces, we got Dream Master. Okay, these are all horse. Oh, I see. Cemetery names. Like, okay, Deuces is a, a well known Wormian, and Ping Pong, I'm guessing. And Dream Master is uh, Enki's. Yep. Enki's uh, character. Okay, okay. So I'm like, well, I don't know Dream Master, but I would have brand and bred him. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> you're thinking it's like a horse. 
<laughs> but in fact, it is the head GM of Warm Online. <laughs> yeah, we got baby Adam. Thank you, Griffo. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so I get a PM. Boeing. Hey, baby. That's the head GM's alt, and he's in this alliance. I said this when most alliance is on. <laughs> yeah. So you essentially oh, man. made a proposition. <laughs> Unknowingly made a proposition <laughs> to Enki. Is that is that what we're getting from this story? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a week later, Mama myself. Okay, here here it goes. Here's the Here's the embarrassing moment, I'm sure. It's coming, it's coming. Baby GM's for the win. <laughs> and Dream Master signs in. Okay, yes. <laughs> I can see where this is going. <laughs> Look, on the bright side, you got Enki to log in on his Remaster account because <laughs> so far so good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, he he needs to be playing more. I I think he needs to get himself back into the worm swing of things. I'm like, hello, and he's like, hello. <laughs> then like 15 minutes of awkward silence. <laughs> so about that <laughs> breeding thing. <laughs> Let me brand and breed <laughs> baby face Brian. <laughs> no, <laughs> thank, thank you, Pergy. <laughs> and you're like, I, I can't explain. <laughs> 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 oh, that's hilarious. Sipiku, last time he was on. There we go. We're both babies. <laughs> he, got, he got struck by lightning on Jackal. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's hilarious. Oh, and yeah, like I have to hear this one. <laughs> <laughs> I must say that you are right. Ah, uh, you told on yourself. Ah, uh, nobody told him. Oh my god. <laughs> that's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst where like you did something wrong and you're like, like this goes for anything and you're like, you think that the other person knows about it because you think somebody told them. And so you end up confessing because you feel like it's the right thing to do only to find out they had no idea in the first place. <laughs> and his response grabs a snowball for his new brand. Well, I guess that's one way to get lucky. <laughs> 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 oh, that's right, Purgy. Gets, gets that ice pack ready. <laughs> Two kids running it, yeah. <laughs> Talking about two kids. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad, we I'm got glad the, it's uh, working. That's what I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> that Adam, glad we're able to do stuff with Adam and we can uh, expand that in the future. So I'm glad it's working. Mm -hmm. Yep. So now the ongoing joke is that he is one of my prize studs. <laughs> Since I'm basically known for horse breeding. <laughs> and I guess I keep breeding, breeding as well. No, so this is a great time. So for priests, priests, what right, okay, the so heck is priest, going yes. on? <laughs> what the heck is going on with the linking issue that you were, you were referring to, to okay. two weeks ago right. or uh, two and a half weeks ago? is that they made changing linking itself. So the recap is that linking priests themselves, if you don't know, is the ability to have two priests of, I'm guessing the same faith, link together so that their favor, which is like their mana pool, the both of their mana pools together into one giant clump of right. favor. I was watching our past stream where we were discussing this when the changes were happening. And I realized that somewhere along the way, I had to go. I had to go AFK. And when I came back, we 
completely forgot to finish that discussion. And the... this happens all the time. <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time. So, so we can pick up from there. But the idea is that linking has been in the game forever, where two two priests link up together and share their favor. Um, and as it turns out, people had discovered, and this was a long time ago, like on the old servers, people had discovered that there is a way to use this feature to help with the channeling skill gain. Uh, and the way they were doing that was that when they, when you link priests together, it increases the difficulty of the cast, right? So they would link a whole bunch of priests together, making the cast really high difficulty. And then they would use a, a spell that was like really low cast time, really low difficulty, like opulence or light token or something like that, and just cast that over and over again. Now that 10 difficulty cast is now, you know, however much you want. 70 difficulty, 80 difficulty. And yeah. as long as you keep that difficulty somewhere near your skill game, no, your actual skill, then you're going to get skill ticks for it. So you can potentially use a five second cast timer and just spam it over and over again using the infinite favor from the linked priest that you have uh, to just for, you know, get your channeling up in a very quick and easy way. Yeah. So. This only became an issue when the new servers launched and people were doing this on the new servers to get their channeling into the 70s, possibly even higher, uh, within a couple weeks of the server opening, maybe three weeks, wow. or whatever, which was insane. And so the devs were like, no, 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 we can't have any of that. We want to progress a little bit slower. So they nerfed it to the ground. Their, their, in, their initial gut instinct was to just, let's turn off favor gain from Link Priest. So they reduced the favor gain. And then they said at the time, they're going to look at it and try to like come up with a better fix for that. Um, and their their ultimate fix was that instead of reducing favor gain, they nerfed channel gain when you're linked. So now it's like if you have, I think, it, I think if you have two priests just linked together, there's no channel nerf. But if you have three, then you get a 15% less skill gain. And it's 15% mm -hmm. more for every additional priest. So if you have like eight priests, you're pretty much getting no skill gain anymore. So that's what they did. And, okay, the r r initial reaction to the favor, uh, nerfing favor gain, I, I guess uh -huh. that didn't go well. That's why they did not end up doing that. Uh, <laughs> that was the big backlash. I, I I actually think it wasn't the backlash that did it. I think it was that it didn't achieve what they wanted it to. Um, Which was, okay, so what did they want to achieve? They wanted to prevent people from using this system in order to cast low difficulty spells and still get skill gain into the 90s. And nerfing the favor gain didn't do that. Uh, people could still link eight priests together and cast those spells and still get channeling gain they might have to sacrifice something on like you know sacrifice materials to get the favor back i don't think so though i honestly don't think so um but but yeah they they could have their alt just sacrificing while they're just spamming and that would have gotten around that problem um so instead they just went straight for channel skill gain nerf and they just nerfed the skill gain to the ground so I, i'm assuming this this makes a lot of sense so now they 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 nerf channel skill gain with linking a bunch of priests together how has this been taken now that it's been a few weeks what are your thoughts? You're, you're a priest, so what are your initial thoughts about that? Because you've never done it yet, so you're coming from uh, knowing what, a, what leveling a priest is. You know what it takes to level channeling. You know, uh, and, and channeling for people that don't know is the skill that you need for, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, like the successful chance of casting a spell and the power that that spell uh, has. Yes. So, yes, and, and this is an example here is like the success. Let's say you wanted to enchant a tool. <laughs> let's say you want to enchant a tool. So we know that there's a, a spell uh, that v Venora priests have. It's called uh, Circle of Cunning. That if you put Circle of Cunning on, let's say, a pickaxe, you get more skill gain when you're doing mining. So mm. uh, 
but Circle of Cunning has the ability to have a power number on it. So the higher the number, the more skill gain you get. So that number starts right. at one, goes up to... I don't even know if there's a technical limit, just like a skill-based limit of some kind. Uh, we've seen casts over 100, usually caps out around uh, there, 100 and I think something. the technical limit is 109 now. Okay, 109. And so... Is it one, uh... I don't yeah, know. I thought we've seen. Can you can you actually land a one ten cast? Is that a thing? Is it possible to land a one ten cast? I mean, if we've seen it, then I guess it's possible. But very, okay, very, so very rare. If it's okay. possible, the only way the only way I can see a one ten cast landing is if you first cast on the item and land a zero, like it has to come out as a zero. Um, and the only way that you can do that is if it had no enchant on it before and you literally roll and you get a zero. <laughs> it can come out as a zero. And then the next cast you do on it, the, the absolute next cast that you do on it, has to be 100. Like it has to be like a 100 roll. Perfect, clean 100. <laughs> That's the only way I can see it happening. Um, right, if you land a zero and have Benediction, is 109 the maximum? I, that's the thing. I I haven't casted on my priest since before any changes to the priest. Like, it's been a long time since I've done any casting. So my knowledge about casting and stuff is, like, quite antiquated. Um, I mean, I just learned that they buffed the, the favor regain, regen, favor regen. And people are, ca like, I remember when in order to get even 30 favor you'd have to wait like a half an hour or more and to get to 50 it, you just never never would wait to get to 50 it would be yeah like so when did they something. when did they do this was there um does anybody know when they uh, when they if i had to guess got this regen up if i had to guess it probably happened sometime around the time they got rid of the player gods because there was a whole priest revamp at that time um, and they did a priest revamp for PvP, so a, a lot of the priests got a lot of different spells for PvP. That's when that tentacles, the tentacle spell came in. Um, and all the animations for those before the demigods removal. And this was... was... In the Libula to Freedom patch, okay. And this was after you stopped really priesting a lot. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when, when they... When they when they allowed Libela to come over, mm -hmm. uh, at that time I was maybe just thinking, should I change to Libela? And then I decided not to. I kept my Najo. Uh, I did a little bit of casting after that, and then I haven't done any casting since. I see. I must say, I probably have like 70,000 favor just sitting on the old servers waiting to be cast, waiting to cast, <laughs> but I never got around to it. Which I guess is not as important these days if you're, if you're regening quicker right i i don't know i don't even know i'd have to I'd have to look at it <laughs> griffo you start sacrificing at the altar of libla go, <laughs> go lib <laughs> you should does libla have something like genesis i don't even know um it's in ropes yeah it's in ropes See, early on when we were investing into the priest, we invested also time into skilling up rope making. So we have a rope maker who has 95 skill. And then subsequently, they made big changes to ropes. Like, all of a sudden, it was like, in order to create ropes, it became, uh, I think it was like cordage ropes became easier. That's what it was. They lowered the difficulty of cordage ropes by a substantial amount. And then they made each cordage rope do more favor. So like, it was like a double whammy. All of a sudden my 1,080 quality cordage ropes became like super awesome. <laughs> so they actually made cordage rope the go-to sacking item. Yeah. Pretty much. And then... Does anybody remember why they did that? Was it a side effect to another change that they were making with something else? 
like were they changing something with with ropes to deal with boat making or something where somebody's like well we need to make cordage easier for <laughs> for boat making I, I, <laughs> or something. i don't think i ever heard of the reason why they changed the veggies or nerf and then the it veggies, just happened my feeling is they they probably thought it was too easy i don't know like you could just the amount of veggies that were being produced on the old servers is just absolutely insane. So you could like buy, you know, 50,000 corn or something pretty easily. And then the chopping action is like really quick, like three seconds or something like this. And uh, yeah, with without really too much effort, you could get a lot of favor really quick. Cordage, on the other hand, takes quite a bit longer to invest in order to get it. I honestly don't know, though. I, I really don't know why. Right. I mean, it is... They both take time, but I think less people have really high rope making than they would have really high mm. farming. Farming. Uh, that, that's probably true. Uh, now, if we could just go back a second to yeah. you were asking like what's what was my reaction to the whole linking and yes you know, i was keeping a close eye on the forums and my my general sense was uh the response from the community was like a mixed bag there were those people in the camp of i they've already got their channeling skill from this exploit i'll call it an exploit um there was complete utter silence from those people like they were just like shut mouths they are they probably benefited enough from it and they were okay with it changing. Then there was a whole bunch of people who were super angry because they had invested in characters and they were leveling their faith up to get them to become priests so that they can use this exploit only to find that they nerfed it before they got there and those people were super angry. Um and then there was the rest of everybody. Uh I'll split those up into the camp. Like there was, there's a whole bunch of people who had no idea what, what was going on and there was no word from them. And then there was the people who knew what was going on, didn't know of this exploit uh, until it was nerfed. And that that's kind of the camp that I was in. I've actually never heard of this linking to increase difficulty to get channeling better. I've never heard of that until this whole change happened. In my eyes, I think it's a good change. I I think it should have probably been changed a lot earlier. So why um, do you think it's a good change? Do you like so and and that's a that's a hard question to to answer. Uh so let me let me put some context. So yeah. let's go to the context of a player, just as a player. Your priest is this a good change? As a player um Okay, so it's one of those, like, you got to rip the Band-Aid off type changes um, where, sure, it would have been great to be able to get my channeling up into the 90s in under a month. That would have been great. Um, but the other pr problem is that everybody else is also going to be doing the same thing. And next thing you know, within a month, you're going to have a ton of priests on the server able to cast now that sounds great <laughs> and all um however my my gut is telling me that once everybody gets to that point and the entire server's flooded with just massive amounts of enchanted items um it will end up deflating the sense of accomplishment to the point where you're you're not going to be feeling motivated to work that much more on your priests right like i feel like i got that to that point on the old servers where my priest he could like could just i i had i had more enchanted gear than i could ever know what to do with like i was literally throwing away 70 enchants like just throwing them away because nobody wants them uh they're they're nobody's going to buy them <laughs> nobody's going to use them because they're all using their 80s and 90s enchants because those are super easy to get and i had just boatloads of this stuff to the point where i was just like why even cast anymore because i don't i'll never run out of this stuff but they did make changes so so one one thing that i i would say that uh 
you had these boatloads of, of enchanted items. But yeah. when you use these enchanted items, then they make a change where the enchant power goes down much faster than it used to. Wasn't that a change that happened? I don't think so. I don't think they changed that. I'll, I, I could be wrong. but uh... Or that they made it so certain things that didn't ha have the ability to go down now do go down. I'm pretty sure they didn't make it so oh, that no. weapons or horseshoes can go down. Oh no, Dezo. Uh, that's going to open up a can of worms for Adam there. Didn't I? I'm depending. The 70 casts. <laughs> huh. no, so I that depends. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so Adam could probably talk cats. for like 10 minutes <laughs> at least just on the differences between dispelling a, an item or a cast yeah. versus improving a cast. See, and there's yeah. Bonus, there's a bonus <laughs> here roll, right? That you get if you're casting on an item that already has a cast on it. But that bonus goes down as the cast goes higher. Uh, so it's really not even worth it to cast on anything above 40-ish. Um, I think 40 will give you plus one. I could be wrong, but it's like something like that, plus one. Whereas and a five will give you plus four. So you, you kind of want the, the cast to be lower when you recast. Right, there there's the formula for it. Yeah, okay. So uh, I want to get to Blue Cortana. So you, you were saying your question was, uh, isn't using an exploit a bannable offense? And if so, how many got banned? So here's here's what I'd say. I'm not a dev, and I'm here's not part of the team, so I don't I don't know. And yes, Purgy saying like, well, nobody got banned and all this stuff, and maybe they should have done something. But uh, right. I would come from the standpoint of this: there are exploits exploits in the game that nobody knows about. I mean, that's really. The reason why they're still exploits like no oh, one's right. no one would even know about them at all no one's doing it and all of a sudden somebody figures it out or yes. somebody knows about them not really knows about them let's say you just stumble upon it, you start doing something and like this like this yeah. if you're a player and let's look at it from a player's point of view uh and this has been going on for years like i don't know half a decade a decade i don't know how long that this has just been a thing and you're a player and we don't know all the mechanics. So they're discovering, let's link this, let's link that, let's figure out things. And they're just figuring it out. So how do we distinguish as players between uh, what is an exploit and what isn't an exploit when right. it's not really that discernible? So can you ban these guys for doing something that uh, was, as far as we all know, part of the game and then at some point the devs come in and go oh no that was actually uh, we didn't know about this exploit let's change it so they, they do the change uh it would be tough to be like okay let's ban all these players now right because, because those players didn't know it was a bannable offense when they were now, doing it they just thought it was part of the game in saying that why we have to go back to why did they change it to begin with why is it an why did they determine <clears throat> oh man that it is an exploit right <clears throat> right and while you clear your and throat. based on that yeah so based on okay. whatever the reason they changed it they have to look and try to oppose some sort of action that solves that problem. And, and, and one of those actions is to patch the exploit, I guess, the, is to, to stop whatever the exploit is from happening to, uh, that's a wrong way of saying that, to determine what to do mechanically to make it so it solves their initial underlying issue with what they're doing. And in this case, Adam said that the issue was that you could level channeling in a way that wasn't intended because you can cast a really, really low level spell and treat it like a really high level spell so that you can get, or you could basically control what level that spell is so that you can 
uh, level it up and use the same low level, one level, five level spell to get really good skill all the way to the top. It's like if I was just to to make nails and then figured out a way. If I made nails, I can get to 100 blacksmithing. I don't need anything right. else. Yeah. And then, exactly. so that's what they were trying to patch. And so at that point, they, they, they figured out a solution. They patched it. Everything's great. Now we have the problem of, okay, we've got all these priests that have really high channeling because of this. Uh, less important for the old servers, we've got lots of players like Adam, who has high channeling that did the real way. Uh, right. And so, but, so this is more for the new servers. What do we do? And, and Mr. Sorry, we're going to get to that topic in just a second. Yeah, that is what I feel hasn't been addressed. So they just sort of, uh, and that, that's a harder topic of like, how do we address right. that? We, do we... we always struggle with these problems because it, th these problems have plagued Worm forever. Like, Fountain not the Pens first time. kind of fits into this category. And it, it's like the game is made by a small group of people and there's a lot of holes in the code. You know, like there's a lot of like exploitable things like, I'm, I'm Let's just call them like it's not really like, an exploit. So what, what's what design flaw? That's what nice guy was saying. It, it that's might not better. Be right to call it an exploit, but it's a design flaw, right? So that could they, potentially they unbalance the nature of the game, right? Could oh, potentially Zarya, unbalance thanks the nature the of the game. Oh, Mr. Saria. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much. Five or the g gift shared. Oh, you gifted tier one sub to Sipiku. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Saria. I was you got to think about one. this in the in the from the perspective of the devs, right? <laughs> they have so many things they need to be working on, and they're not really aware of a lot of the design flaws that are being misused by players to do unintended things. Um, and this goes whatever along with, the unintended uh, what, things are. Yeah, Blue Cortina said. So you're saying if you keep it to yourself or to close friends, it's okay to use as an exploit? And the answer is. Uh, no, it's still not okay. It's just that if you do that, it will probably work out to your benefit. And this has been seen in the history of Worm, where like traders were like this, right? Like people kept traders so secret. And by the time we found out about them, like we, we caught the tail end of it. Um, we, we, we thought, yeah. wow, this is like crazy game mechanic. Like, let's do this. And then all of a but sudden, it's not it's like, an exploit. Uh... It's it was it was it was something that was put into the game and then ended up uh, when they finally tracked it over time, saw the progress of how that game mechanic was being was used. functioning or being used, and then uh, reevaluated. Okay, is this going to destable? the game how is it going to destable the game do we need to make an action and so right. it's not like we're calling it exploits but they're not exploits like i i think design uh what did you say it was a design flaw design is probably flaw. a better yeah. way to put it uh now it becomes an exploit only when it's been identified they've tracked how it's being used in the game they've identified uh how it's de balancing the game out and then it becomes public, let's say, and people know know about it. And then they go, and the devs okay. Say and the devs go, you know what? Yeah. We realize that this is not good for the game. So this action, we're now deeming uh, an exploit. With this action, we're now saying, like, please don't do it. We're going to be removing it from the game. We haven't yet. And at that point, it becomes a bannable offense. If you right. know about it, the devs are telling you about it, and then you still do it. And I'm yeah. guessing, I'm guessing, uh, uh, CDN Bass, you don't want me to talk because uh, no one can see my face now. <laughs> Most streamers have Sorry. a cat cam. Brian and Adam, uh, Brian has an Adam cam. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, so at that point, it's a ban. When people know about yeah. it, they've announced it, and you see those that actually happening in the game. So when they realize that it's a, it's a it's an exploit, and they haven't been able to uh, they haven't been able to actually uh, patch it, 
you'll see these announcements in like the event window while playing talking about it saying please we we know that you guys know about this we know about it now if you do this it's now a bannable offense right um the th- the thing is blue, blue cortina is that before it was known that people were doing this by the devs and they at the time deemed that it was okay this was before the new servers opened up the reason why it became not okay is simply just because on the new servers the progress was too fast like on the old servers it was looked at as a way that priests can sort of catch up to the you know veterans and it didn't matter because all the veterans had 90 casting anyway so Right, it's we're looking it, too black and white here. It's 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 okay. We, we're all here to determine how do we have a healthy player base? How do we have a healthy game? And then once they figure out that a specific game mechanic is not healthy for the game, then it's a benefit for everybody to be like, let's reevaluate how to make this healthy again. And the, so we, let's just say it like that's that's what they did, that's what they always do, and unfortunately, uh that's how you have to look at it and once you look at it in that light why like you know why wouldn't we want a, a better healthier game and and there'll be some people that are mad that 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 the change happened because they were in the thick of it at the time whatever they were using it for such and such do something and now it's gone um yeah. and it's Chaz not a perfect is... answer right it's not and, and that's the yeah, problem Chaz... Chez is saying it shouldn't have been debatable, but there should have been rollbacks. And uh, that is debatable. I'm sure the devs debated that as a as a potential thing. Um, we don't know what went into that decision or what factors were discussed or what information they know, like how many priests were using this and how high did they get. And uh, so it's, I mean, that was my gut reaction. I felt like it should, there should have been rollbacks. Um, well, let's say there was. Would we know about it? Yeah, right. That's another thing. I don't know. I mean, we're talking about it, but would we actually know whether there was like some players they would be ident- they would identify however many players there was. I mean, there wouldn't be that many and then they would uh they would take action on them. Have they? I don't know. Yeah. And then what action would think... that be? I don't know either. Yeah. Um, I don't think they did anything uh to We don't know whether they did anything or, or or that sort of thing or maybe they have other changes that then because because another they don't have to just like it's not again a black and white sort of thing right it's like they got channeling well let's get rid of their channeling maybe they have some creative ways that they can change this in the future that we don't know about either right maybe Here, channeling the reality. okay go ahead yep maybe channeling it becomes they change the way priesting works that the impact of those people getting channeling becomes less problematic. And so mm-hmm. they, they could they could make changes like that, the indirect changes that solve the problem. Because the problem isn't that they have channeling skill. The problem is that the that game mechanic that they used to get the channeling skill debalances the game and could ruin the our 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 basically our, our world, our, our worm life are the, um, the now, way that the game works. It, well, it doesn't really detriment us. Like, it doesn't ruin it for us because right. it actually just means that we have access to better casted stuff now. And, and, and the other thing I was going to say was that it doesn't... It, I can't see rollbacks being that much of a, a, like a fix for it because the reality is the people who did this are like metagaming grinders anyway. And... The reality is it might have just shaved 10 hours off of their grind or something like that. Like if, if this wasn't in the game and regular grind, like they had to regular grind, they would have gotten to 70 like the next day or two or something like that anyway. Um, yeah. So- and, and we're talking about a game that nobody other, nobody's other action than the game or skills should matter, right? We're, we're in Worm Online and you can do anything in this game and accomplish anything in this game. Me and Adam joined a, a server that was out for quite a while, and we had so much fun doing it when we started playing Worm. It like the, the the question is that well, these servers have been around for one month now, one and a half months, 
or one month and one week. Right. Now we're so far behind the grind of of what we can accomplish within the next year. But Worm is a long term game. You can come into this server a year down the road, two years down the road, and still make an impact. And that's exactly what we did. Right. We didn't come on to a new server. We've never, this is our first time we've ever had the opportunity to, to be around during a launch of a new set of land in our eight years of playing. And <laughs> has it been any different than, like, how do you feel? Has it been any different to, to do it this way than we did any other way when we joined a new, a new uh, land? Like what How do you, do you feel? Do what, do has it what felt, do, has the gameplay that you've had felt differently than any other time that we started playing again? I, think, I would say uh, things do seem quite a bit more friendly now in the game compared to when we first started. <laughs> what do you mean friendly? Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> like, let's look at deliverance. We start on deliverance. You know what I, you know what I mean by friendly. <laughs> Well, we start on I mean, deliverance. The... I'm talking about game mechanics and gameplay and all that stuff and yeah. what we're doing and the different things like that. Well, when I say friendly, I mean like game mechanic friendly, like in the sense that like when we first started, there was, you remember, everything was unfinished. <laughs> That's what you mean. Created it. Like, <laughs> he just means that when we started, <laughs> it was harder right. to play, like so much harder to play back in the day than it is now. Like, they, the game mechanics you know, have changed. All... All the frustrating things that happen in the That's game, true. like that, that feel like, oh, this is taking forever, or like it's like a fifty percent chance. Why did I fail twelve times in a row? Type thing. Um, all of that stuff was like a hundred times worse when we first started playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> so it's definitely come a long way in that respect. <laughs> Everybody knows. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Zental Bright. The game is is much more soft for new players. One hundred percent. That is so true. <laughs> yeah. Game is yeah. so much softer. Um, but I think that's a good thing, honestly. <laughs> I mean, we want people to play this game. We want more people in this game, and the way to do that is to make it a little bit less frustrating. <laughs> yeah. So, so the the idea, and there was a, there was a lot of people saying that the idea of like you have to join the new server early or uh if you're you're oh, gonna miss out on something if you don't join the new and that's like it's never been like that for us ever no no even this one i didn't feel like that uh there's always going to be those people who get their skills up really fast really early and uh those are the people who can play and you don't have often. to worry about that and then you just don't have to worry about that those people are going <laughs> to be there no matter what so apply that logic to priesting you don't have to worry about those players. They are not impacting yeah. your uh, play style. They, they might actually positively impact your play style more than worsen yeah. it. And so, uh, and, and, and there's them, a number of reasons for that. Good for them for getting their skill up and, and dominating the market. Like that's part of the reason why people love this game is because you have the option of doing that. <laughs> that's right. Oh, thanks for oh, that 25-bit cheer, <laughs> Mr. Saria. Like that, that's, that's my stance. Like, sure, the worm team will always be looking at the game and the way that the game's designed and try to balance it out as they discover things. And yeah. this is another example of that. But no matter what, shouldn't really impact you. Other than that it's going to impact you as a benefit to know that they are working on the game and balancing it out because the other side of it is that they don't work on these things. The world becomes really debalanced over time. And uh, like Adam was saying earlier, it could just end up then ruining your enjoyment of it because of people going way faster than they should and getting to a state where then they just, don't want to play uh, how does that benefit any of us and adromyth you got 70 faith on the unpopular mag priest and selling strong wall cast for easy money good good for you that's awesome i yeah i i adam really was just talking about the mag priests just this we're morning like debating. <laughs> we're debating like do we 
have a priest? Like, should we make a priest? And if we do, what should it be? And I'm like, if if I make a priest, I kind of want mag just for Strongwall. <laughs> she would mag just for Strongwall. Just for you Strongwall. would go through uh, really? all of that priesting, and then just so that you can have Strongwall. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Libula doesn't have Strongwall, so. That's what do you, What do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> Should Adam go mag for Strongwall? Should Adam go Libula? Yes, Little has Strongwall on PvP servers. However, I don't think it works on PvE servers. And if I'm wrong about that... Yeah, just <laughs> Which doesn't PvE, look PvE, like PvE. you're wrong. No, I'm not wrong, yeah. So if it's not <sighs> on the PvE, then that doesn't matter. <laughs> dirt. Summon dirt, yeah. Uh, Brian wants me to go foe. I wanted him to go foe. Yeah, why do you want? Why do you want? And Adam to wants to, him to go mag. I've got a less stake in this because I'm not going to be the priest and I won't be leveling it up like Adam <laughs> will. But I want foe because I want, I want the the wild growth. First off, okay. So uh, we need trees. That's a shorter term plan. Wild it's growth, got. Yeah. They've got Genesis. So if you're wanting to uh, level animals or, or be the guy in the alliance that could get rid of bad trait animals, you could be that. So th those are two two things. But then you also mm -hmm. have like uh, the ability to enchant mailboxes to make them work. Yeah, so then you can become the mailbox courier guy, and and, and travel and and become the person that can sell that to, to that service to players. And then on top of that, you have a life transfer, the ability to link with another priest and cast the life transfer on weapons. Yeah. Oh, in Wolfmare, nobody ever plans on making lots of mistakes in the mine. <laughs> but we all know mistakes are inevitable when doing massive mining project it's true <laughs> <laughs> so like, whoa whoa those are drop shaft there what the <laughs> <laughs> so i mean like what are what are our plans mag is great for mines for sure mm -hmm. you can use that priest as a miner you can use that priest to cast strong wall to fix mining it things are we going to make a big mine and if so is it enough for you to do that grind just for strong wall uh i mean it's not just for strong wall there there are other things that mag is useful for so well, let's place added, them on the table yeah they added uh, a new enchant that mag priest can do uh, it's specifically an enchant that you put on pickaxes and it increases the effectiveness of surface mining, which is uh, I mean that's specific, good, but very specific. It's good, yeah. I kind of wish they did more for Mag because uh, Mag is definitely the the least useful of them all, I'd say. Uh, but the other thing they could do is cast web armor, which uh, yeah. That sounds awesome. So does that does that like slow the mobs from attacking you? Because that would be awesome it, for PVE. Yeah, it, it slows the movement speed of mobs that have attacked you. Wait, uh, wait. So it might make the movement running away speed easier. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, they should, <laughs> less enjoyable. They do, <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like a more PVP kind of thing. That would be Some awesome for good, PVP. Yeah. What do we got here? Village. I don't think Mag has his heal. I, I don't think. Dominate. Yes. Dominate is another fun one. Okay, just so for, we're going up to there. Just for fun, I guess. It's not really that useful, but uh, Dominate seems fun. Oh, Focus will. Mags can heal. Okay. I didn't know that. That might have been added. So that's not that bad. Added? with the priest changes. So, and let's just place this on the table. Adam has had a Vin priest. Adam has had a mag priest in the past. Yep. You've done both. Yep. Have you had a faux priest? Uh, for a short time, 
before Najo came out, and then I switched it to Najo. Because to be honest, uh, Najo was like pretty much all foe and mag put together. Okay. You could strong wall, you could Genesis, you could. Uh, the only thing that was missing was wild growth, but you could courier, you could cast life transfer, you could do all the things, almost all the good things that foe had and have strong wall at the same time. Yeah, so. <laughs> what, is it, what does everyone think? What should Adam do? With all that on the table, the benefits of foe and the benefits of mag. And now when you guys answer that, let's move on because I know that there's a touchy subject going around. Another one, another priest touchy subject that we still haven't gotten to. And this is right. dealing with, this is dealing with uh, the way that sacrifice works. And, and, for, and, and as far as a follower is concerned, how does sacrifice work for us? We sacrifice in, uh, we put it, a rare item into a sa into a, an altar and we sacrifice it. And then we get a hundred percent food and water and a hundred percent nutrition. But this is not what they're talking about. They want to make sacrifice changes to priests only. And uh, as far as what well, Adam's telling me, what you're telling me is that uh, they proposed a change to how the way sacrificing works. Uh, yes. Let, let's 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 do this a little differently. Okay. At some point, the devs probably said something is wrong. Something we need to solve something with priests. Uh, and we're let's see if we can solve this through sacrificing. Right. And now, like I'll that, be honest, this is. Hmm. I am not sure at all what it is they're trying to solve. Um, they have said on the forum that, like, some issues, like they listed some things they want to address. Although, my feeling is is that their proposed solution actually doesn't really address it, and so I, it left me feeling like there's some hidden agenda, like there's some there's something that they're trying to fix. And they're trying to do it with this weird system. But as people point out in the thread, there's like a really easy fix for it if you want to address those things without this weird system. So let, let's go let's go back up a bit because let's let's yeah, discuss so what, what it is that they're trying to do. Are change. the devs proposing no sorry. What are the devs proposing that they're trying to fix? Let's I actually go with that. kinda wanna go back a little bit even more okay. there's people who don't know anything about priests or sacrificing or anything so the current okay. way things well. work is that uh you could put an item certain certain items are better than others into an altar and sacrifice it and as a priest that will give you an instant favor bump so like mana like you'll get mana basically for that sacrifice and people would sacrifice and then use that favor to cast and then repeat that process. Sacrifice again, cast, sacrifice, crap, cast. Like that's the general thing. Now, like any sacrifice, item, like any, you, uh, you sacrifice any item and then you get some sort of favor. Boost. That is true. Any item will give you a favor boost. That However, can fit into an most altar. Items, <laughs> most items, most items, yeah, it has to fit in an altar. Most items will give you a very, very, very tiny boost. And there's certain items that give you more. Okay, so uh, I don't know if we want to go into the whole system there. Yeah, no, that, that's good enough. <laughs> Does anybody yeah. want to hear how that works? <laughs> I mean, more that, than that. that, that I could go on for another 10 minutes about the details of that, but the idea is there are certain items in this game that you can sacrifice, and it gives you a decent amount of favor. Like uh, one of the items is Cordage Rope. Cordage Rope is considered one of the better items. Um, and so... You know, they even made a boost to it. So it's like a 70 quality quarter rope. Somebody might be able to tell me the number now. But back back when I was sacrificing way back in the day, a 70 quality quarter rope gave you 10 favor. Um, I think it's more now. It might be 17 favor. I don't know. So that's pretty good, I'd say. Um, considering it, you only need like 50 favor to cast something. It's like 20, 20 to 25 now. Oh, my God. It's like, it's like they made it easy mode. <laughs> It's insane. 
I have a BSB with like 3,070 quality cordage ropes. Anyway, so that's yeah. the way that it worked before. You would sacrifice. Sacrifice would be a 30 second cast, and then you would cast your WOA, which is 20 second cast. So your cycle is 50 seconds. Every 50 seconds, you can do a cast on something. Um, and what they said in the post right away is, we want to make these changes because we feel that priests are spending more most of their time sacrificing, and they want to minimize or lower the amount of time that priests are sacrificing and increase the amount of time that they get to cast. So, okay, so <laughs> let me put that in a way that uh, that I can understand. So they, they want to make the gameplay of priests more fun. More fun. Is that essentially what they're saying we think that they're doing boring stuff like sacrificing a lot and spending a lot of time doing that yeah let's fix that and make priesting more fun by yeah. making them be able to cast more often right than sack so uh now that we got that out of the way what are they trying to do to make them more fun yeah so this is what they propose they propose that when you sacrifice something, it doesn't give you an instant favor boost or favor. Uh, what it will do is give you kind of like a buff that will increase your favor regen by a certain amount, depending on how much you sacrifice. And furthermore, they made it so that you could sacrifice much more than the 100 that would cap you out. So you can sacrifice, let's say, 300, enough to get 300 favor, and that 300 favor will sort of come at you over time so you can cast and then regen and cast and regen like that um so they want to make it a buff so you right, sacrifice kind of all like, of this favor that favor gets pulled into a buff and then you get that buff over time a over favor. time exactly that's what you're saying yeah. okay yeah. now my initial gut instinct was but then after every cast you're going to have to still wait, right? Ticks happen every, what, 10 seconds, 8 seconds? I guess it depends on server lag, but somewhere in there, like every 10 seconds, you'll get a, a tick, a regen tick. And I can't imagine they're going to make it so that you get 50 in one tick. Like, you'll probably get, like, an extra 10 or something like that. So you might end up having to wait five ticks before you can cast again, or or maybe three ticks, whatever. Let's say, let's say it's three ticks. You have to wait three ticks, before you can cast again. Well, that three ticks is going to take 30 seconds. So now all of a sudden you're casting and now instead of sacrificing, you're waiting 30 seconds and then <laughs> casting and then waiting and then casting. And then you're going to have to sacrifice followed by waiting again. Right? So, like it's, it, okay. So to me, it so seems like it's going to increase. Putting it back in the sacrifice, in the, uh, the context of what I think they're trying to do, which is trying yeah, to make yeah. priests I, more fun. I feel like just to save you time, I don't think we need to dig that one because I don't think we want to go any lower than this. Ah, uh, okay. Corner. Yeah. Okay. Right. Like, so you're right. Otherwise we'll be Let's here place forever. it back. <laughs> so let's do this one. Now. So what they did to, to make it more fun is instead of performing the action of sacrificing, you're saying they replace that with doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> with so, waiting. <laughs> So they're, they're fun. Uh, the way to, to make priests more uh, engaging is to do nothing. Uh, I would also say, though, that would that then? Because one thing that, they could, they, that this could potentially do that we're not seeing is make it so priests are viable without needing to stand next to an altar. Does this, does this change do that? I don't because that so. could make things more fun, right? Because then you 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 do your altar thing and then you're off and you're you got your favor gain somewhere else gonna, in the world. Like the, the for thing a long is time. Like, like priest the priest who's doing this is going to hunker down and get to their grind like casting like like they're they're setting up for a casting session. So here's all my tools in this like storage. I'm going to pull out a tool and cast on it. Put it back. Like where are you going to go? If that's what your goal is, like you might be able to yeah, run over here to get some drink of water and then you'll have to run back to the tool belt, tool place. And you're still going to have to sacrifice every maybe 
five or six casts or whatever. So, <laughs> and Mr. Saria, portable altar, that is a good idea, but uh, and, and that might make priests more fun. Uh, I, I, I've not, Adam, you would have to answer that, but I don't know. I don't know I, if I think uh, you, that doesn't I think solve the altars... problem that they. That they're trying to solve, I guess. I think you can load altars now. <laughs> I guess that's true. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what it is they're trying to solve here. Like, is it to re to increase the amount of casts that you can do? You know, like, make it so that you can pump out 50 casts instead of before 30 casts in the same amount of time. But you can't load altars, you can just push them and pull them, is that it? Yeah, before they weren't even movable. Like you couldn't even Right. The... Yeah, before they At were least even the movable. gold and that's silver ones. Just... Yeah, that's just yeah, push pull place, yeah. Um just anyway, to go back so... on the Yeah, so this is the... their solution if goal i guess is, if their goal is to increase cast per hour like how many casts i can pump out um i am not in favor of that change uh, i really don't think priests need to increase the amount of casts we can do because as it is we all know how the old servers are You're, we're going to get to a point where there is way too many casted items than anybody possibly could use like it's going to get to that point and it's not going to take that long in my opinion based on the way things are going now um so just well, speeding that up it's like we're speeding it up to get to the end game faster that's all okay so here's here's my problem with that because you're looking at it from almost like a min maxing type of scenario uh more like or, a or like, server balancing uh, server balancing so let's look at that that issue because you're but, but saying also game balancing like what 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 would this game be like if if i could get to 90 in any skill i want by tomorrow like what am what it, it like, but this change wouldn't do that. I'm I'm making it extreme because what this change would if if they're gonna make it so you can pump out casts faster, it just mm -hmm. means you're gonna get to the end faster. And is that what we want? Like, do we want to be able to get to the end faster? Well, this is the argue... same exact argument as or a debate over faster action timers. But whenever we. Whenever we discuss that, we always balance that with slower skill gain, right? Yeah. Like so double, double the uh, action timers, uh, half the skill gain, right? Pl apply because that logic all... now to channeling okay. gain. Okay, so you could make it faster <laughs> casting, but uh -huh. make it that it's way harder to land land higher casts. That's a possibility. Or just just takes just as long to level up channel channel grinding or whatever. Well, even though you're doing up, more. It's... Even though right, you're doing so... more. I, I, I'm not even talking about leveling up channeling. I'm talking about what if the players already have high channeling, right? They're, they're yeah. channeling in the 90s because that's going to happen soon. There's going to be people with 90 channeling very soon. And you now double the rate at which they can pump out casts. Okay, now so then, yeah, be... apply the logic to what you were saying. Uh, so, you yeah, can do more casts, that, but make it but harder then... to get higher casts. Harder to make higher casts. I wouldn't so that be against that. I mean, anybody who we have knows the same amount casts. of higher casts as we did before, but we have the priests don't sit around and like just wait more and do less casts. They have the ability to do more. I'd be okay with that. However, a lot of people won't be because, as it is, if anybody's done casting before, you know, um, getting a high cast is super painful like even i i did a stream a while ago probably find it where i'm like i have this rare pickaxe and my goal is to get 90 casts wa 90 cast coc on it and i just i have my 94 and a half channeling priest with just unlimited favor sitting there and i'm just going at it with all the buffs i can get and i'm just casting away and getting 90 is not as easy as it sounds even under those circumstances so there's a few different ways that we can get rid of that. I, I don't want to bring it up because it's off topic. Uh, the idea of imp, uh, cast imping, the idea of 
changing the way that priests function to make them more fun and interactive, but still have the same sort of uh, abilities and bonus and uh, the ability on what they can do in the game uh, to just sort of make them more fun, but give, still give them the same uh, bonuses and that sort of thing that they have. But really what we what we would want to talk about is more about the 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 priesting and let's the sacrificing that changes that they're making and why they're making them what i would say is this thank you so much bone carver for the follow oh, thanks for the follow yeah how can i how can i word this Okay, let, let's go. Let's go to some some of you guys. What what are you guys thinking? Are you reading the 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 comments here? We need to find a way to grind channeling better with spells that don't have a permanent effect, right? <sighs> I mean, as it is already, some of the better ways of grinding channeling don't have a permanent effect. Like, I mean, the way I grinded channeling was using vessel. And that worked pretty good. And that has no permanent effect. So we're, we're looking specifically at the changes they're trying to make to... to sacrificing to pool their favor or to regen uh, priest's favor. I'll be honest, I don't even know what they're intention is like what are they trying to achieve with this i think it, it all comes down to one thing we're, we're all looking at it from a lens of this is how priests are they have how many spells does a priest have 30 or 40 or something like that i'm like 40 spells something like that. how many spells are deemed like the spells that a priest should that that you go to the priest to cast how many spells are very very useful for a priest on pve on pve let's stick Depends to what we know Priest, but i would say like if you're mag it would be three and if you're foe it would be maybe seven and if it's vin it might be four or five or something like that a handful is what you're basically <laughs> handful, telling me a handful yeah on pve so if both of these things, which really what I think they're trying to do is make priests more interactive or fun to play, shouldn't the solution really be trying to create more progression and by adding more abilities that priests are actually useful in the game mm. to give them more of an appeal the way that you would have to do that is to give them more variety of things to do. And you're talking like a handful of things. We do all of this stuff, priests in general. We were doing all of these grinding of channeling, grinding of favor and sermons and, and praying and all this stuff for like a handful of useful abilities on the PvE server. Right. And so they can go through all of these things whatever they want to do change the way that sacking works say change the way regenning works change the way that linking works but it doesn't change the types of players that are willing to go through all of this to get their priesting up it's not more fun uh, either of these options that they're doing the only way to and make hey, priests hey Deathwind, how's it going hey death drop in there yeah like, I, you were saying something yesterday to me about this, and I think Sipaku's saying the same thing. It's it's that the Worm dev team has to first figure out their overall vision for priests. Like, they have to come up with, like, the end result of the whole thing first. Yeah, what is the that... vision of priests in the land of Worm? What is it now? Right. So we know what, what, what priesting is in the game right now. If you had to describe... What is the vision of priesting in Worm Online right now? What is it? 
I mean, it seems like it's more of a uh, through a PVE thing. lens. <laughs> through a PvP, PVE lens. I, I want to be dead honest here. I really feel like the way that this game has been designed, it's been designed so that priests force people to pay premium on alts. Like that was the fundamental piece to it all. It's like give these characters the ability to do all these fun things that they would want to do, however, limit them so that they force them to make it an alt. Um, and that's, I think, by design. Um, I, I think that all it really is is trying to enhance gameplay, like give, give people a reason to play these alts so that people pay more premium. And, and that's a fair, I think it's fair to say because I mean, that's a good a good business move by the video game developers. I really feel like it's not terrible of them to do that. <laughs> but, like, honestly, I now, don't know if they have an overall vision in terms of, like, immersion or anything like that. I mean, we, we'd have to go through, let's say, a design change and then propose what would that do to the game and the players in general right now and like the question really is is like okay let's say they change priests everybody can be a priest if they want to mm -hmm. doesn't mean you can right you still got to go through the grind you still got to go through the changes uh and let's say we don't change much about the way priests work would that stop people and thank you so much for the for the follow tick rated would that stop people from creating alts to make priests. Right. Like, and Would Cortina, it? Cortina is saying the same kind of thing. Like, and, and the answer is yes. Uh, I think if they made it so that priests restrictions, is this what you're talking about? Priest restrictions? Yeah. Let's get rid of the priest restrictions. Right. Anybody could be us... a priest and yeah, magic becomes probably... more prevalent. Yeah, what, what's going to end up happening is right away, you're going to lose about 500 subs or, or more. That's you think so? That's happen to the game. Oh, yeah, easy. Easy. The, the, the game will lose, like, a lot of money if they make that change. Um, because people would start just... They would just priest their main. And then they wouldn't have a need for a priest alt. Or would they main their priest? That's what I mean. They would... They main the priest, the priest they main, one or the other. Um, you would but there's still the of option of needing sense. alts. It's an option, but it's a less desirable option now that if your priest can do everything. Right? Now it's more desirable. Like, that's why you see it so prevalently. But think about this. Let's, okay, you're, you're saying this like, yeah, that's what they do. But let's... Really take a step back on how priests work. Okay. And okay. see if this, as a priest, you would do this. Okay. You, your main, is a miner. Your main is a blacksmith. You're going to do mining. Right. You're going to do blacksmithing. You're going to do all this stuff. Now I tell you, you can also be a priest. Now, you know what it takes to level a priest. To level a priest, uh -huh. you have to do channel grinding. You got to do all this stuff. You have to be at an altar. You have to do all this stuff. Would you want to combine that into one character? Because you would not be able to level up blacksmithing as fast. You now would not be able to level up priesting as fast. Here, Two what it would do. characters would be better. Here's what I would do. So let's say, like now, we're in a perfect position for me to demonstrate this, right? Like we're about to think about priesting, right? And you want me to go foe. Mm -hmm. Let's say I do that. Let's say I get a foe priest, right? Then I would also want to get another alt because in order to cast life transfer, you need a hundred favor. And the only way to do that at the beginning is to have two priests linking up. Okay. So that's what I would do. I would, I would premium up a main priest and I would premium up an alt priest so that I can link to do those casts. Now, if they made the change that my main can now be a uh, mm -hmm. priest, I wouldn't need to make that second alt. I would just use my main as the alt battery. And then the battery could do like making the favor and all that stuff like that while the main casts and I wouldn't need that third yeah. character. 
you would need the third character. So now third you're saying so you would go from three characters to two. If three to that. two, right? And that's <laughs> probably the ratio that you would see people like the, the the premium drop off. You would go for every three characters, you would lose one essentially. Because, I mean, if we're combining characters, like typical, you're saying here, wait two years and you have all these people with everything, but. What that would do is, so instead of two characters or three characters, uh, that would be able to attain, obtain 95 blacksmithing and 95 mining and 95 like channeling, all that stuff. You would reduce that to one character, and then that character now, to get to the 95 of all those things, take much longer, like more years to accomplish that because you can only do one thing at a time, whereas before you were doing both at the same time. So now the grind... It's almost doubled to do these things. Mm. And so you wouldn't see one character with all three of those as fast as you would see two characters with all three of those or with a mixture of those three. And wouldn't that prolong what you're doing in the game? Wouldn't that prolong the way the, the amount of time that you would spend in the game long term? So if we're looking long term, that would actually help the game because people would stick around longer in this like if their stick around if their plan with was tunes. to with less tunes right. right so if you're th so i'm not thinking short term here typical i'm thinking long term and then now you're going okay we're going to lose subs but these players are going to play longer in theory then the amount of right. money that the, the game loses or gains could potentially just be the same longer term. Right, because the, the, thing, you'll probably still alt priest for random casting, but you probably wouldn't need to have a battery as well, a separate. Anyway, I, I don't know. I, and typical points up the point about the the uh, market, and that's another issue that I haven't even we haven't even. Yeah, the there there it. would be lots of side effects to these things that so, that the devs and the players wouldn't wouldn't know what would happen if this if this it would take a very long time. And this is why yeah. once they make a change like this and it goes through its motions and the players are playing and they're seeing what the changes are, that's when you come into the situation where they find a mechanic that's perfectly fine and they deem it oh, this is actually game balancing, then they cast it off as an exploit, and then players get mad. And this is why we get into these situations like we were talking about earlier in the stream. Right. <laughs> like, it was not an exploit, and then we make a change, and then we kind of spend a few years seeing how it goes through the game and how it functions, and then we... <laughs> We're kind of like, oh Deems. crap! This is not <laughs> we have good that for change. the game, uh, <laughs> yeah. and it could be a side effect or whatever. Anyway, uh, yeah. that's why stuff like this happens. Like we yeah. we're we're wanting change, and and in the end, we're wanting a couple things. We're wanting players. Actually, we're not even wanting a couple things. Uh, like as a dev team or even as players we want more players to play and we want more of them to enjoy their time so that they spend longer yeah. time to play that's, that's what we want like that's we've the goal come from that perspective like we, we've never really tried to like at any time that we come across one of these things we we would report it as opposed to try to use it to our advantage usually because we know how it will affect the game in the long run and we honestly honestly and truly want to see this game succeed and that's the main reason why we stream is that we want to spread the word about this game and get more people playing it so when i see some change that happens that i think is going to detriment the game in the long run like i really that really sets my alarm bells going and typical hor horrible cases of griefing now yeah and uh this is nothing compared to the, how you could grief on PV when we first started. They've been slowly tackling uh, any cases of griefing over time. So if you believe, because I haven't heard of anything, so if you believe there's horrible cases of grief, griefing happening and they're scarring new players, then the devs' position would have to be, uh, what exactly are they doing? Is there one, two, three, ten different mechanics that 
they're doing to grief these players? And then how can we adjust those mechanics to reduce or eliminate those that that mechanic, right? And uh, that's that's essentially the devs would have to just investigate that and see all those things. And then how often is it happening? So now you have to balance how many players have this affected? What is the percentage of the population that is affected by these, what you're saying, mind traps? And is it worth, what, what are our mind traps for anything right now? And then how would you eliminate uh, those or reduce their effects for new players? And so mm. uh, this is a good topic of like, how do we make players play longer? How do we make things more attractive? And I saw a topic on the forums that I think was really good. Mm. And it's essentially, actually, it's not just one topic. A lot of people have been asking this, I think, especially all the, all the veterans. And it's essentially the question of how do we get players to play on the old servers? Mm. How do we get players to play on Xanadu and Deliverance and Exodus and Celebration and all these things? And we know that a lot of players are attracted to the new servers. Why are they attracted? It's hard to really know in total uh, because it's hard as a new player if you go and ask a new player they probably have a bunch of things that they're going to say that make it attractive to them but a lot of them probably would apply to the old servers too right without them realizing it like oh they want a new server where they can have wilderness or they 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 want to be they want a server where they can uh, be the person that goes out and be, has a deed, uh, let's say hermit style, or 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 they they can go is out that, and that trend, uh, yeah. That trans comment is great. No one wants to color to color in a coloring book that's already been colored in. <laughs> right. Okay. So so if that if, let let's say it's that they want a fresh server where they can go out and do their worm things. They want wilderness, essentially, is what you're saying, Zetrin. They want mines that are fresh and land that is, uh, you know, grass or whatever the, the tile is and trees and all this stuff. Okay. What does wilderness mean to us? Like, is that it? Is, is wilderness uh, a land that has trees and grass and no pavement and no houses and mines that are See, not mined. Is that all that I, it would take you know what? to classify okay, so that as wilderness? I, I know where this is going, but I'm going to just point out this idea here that uh, elaborate on Zetran's comment. And that's like the, the way it currently is. Um, wilderness does grow back in the sense that like everything will decay and trees will grow back, but the game still leaves something there. Uh, it leaves like the terraces that have been flattened out and the mines will be a nightmare to try to fix unless you have a strong mm -hmm. baller. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it would be, the analogy would be like, like I color in a coloring book and then I go and take a nice eraser and erase it all, but you know, there's still smudges <laughs> and then say, here, here's your new coloring book. I still think that that leaves a, an element of, I don't really want that one. I still want a fresh new one. <laughs> that would be better. Yeah. So let's continue with this analogy. So if we're looking specifically new players going, I want wilderness and we want to, and the devs are looking, okay, let's solve that problem. How do we create wilderness in the old server? And we're looking at it now. And the way that it works is it kind of works. Things decay, things go away, stuff comes back. But like you're saying, Adam, it's like erasing, uh, like using a racer in a coloring book, it's not 100%. You wouldn't, you'd notice that people are there. So yeah, then the devs like would then have to go in and go, okay, then how do we make this area pristinely wilderness again or untouched mm -hmm. again? And they can, they can do this. Like this is not 
out of the realm of possibility and they've actually taken steps in the past to make things decay faster uh to, to clean up the land uh for for things to return back to its wilderness state and uh let's say they did that let's say okay this is this this is we've deemed that wilderness is an untouched land is what players want and then they go through the old server they apply changes that closes up mines and 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 gets rid of the the look of where deeds used to be and then players go on to it now is this enough let's say you zetrin is this enough now to convince you to go to the old servers knowing that there's tons of untouched land now mm. that you can go and uh and discover with the added benefit that those lands once belonged to somebody in the past, to kingdoms in the past, potentially, and you can uncover it with archaeology. Right. Was that the problem? Just not having a trace of previous set settlements? Right, like you're saying, like completely erase and like mold the land. Like Over time, the land, land remolds, mines close up erase the smudge marks is that yes. enough because that I, might be enough for you zetrin it might not be enough for everybody enough. that that might the... be enough and, and and i think like it because because the, the current method that they use to create pristine lands is just open another server which we all know the long-term detriment of, detrimental effects of that i think this would really solve that problem there's going to be a lot of problems implementing implementing it like for example you it obviously would be like off deed things like if it's not on deed then things are going to start reverting back to natural form. But what what right. if what about like highways or roads? I guess they'd have to they could they could sort of like and Deathwind the new highway system. This highways, wouldn't that. erase old settlements, but remember that there are things in the game that last forever, essentially like just forever, and it clutters the land that they could do to get rid of that sort of thing over time. You would still see old settlements. You just wouldn't be around indefinitely, which ruins yeah. this whole wilderness aspect. I mean, it could be on long time scales. It could be like, let's say the deed fell and um, things start decaying. And once the last building is gone, then that area becomes like starting to revert back. And that process can happen over maybe, maybe months or something like that. Um, I'm thinking the problem I'm seeing is that if you start having natural, naturally changing lands, um, things like public mines, for example, might run into problems. Like if, let's say they say, okay, well, this, this mine hasn't been on deed for X many, so start collapsing, right? Let's start increasing the rate at which collapses happen. Well, now you'd have to reinforce all your off deed mines creating more work for everybody. Yeah, so so uh, in Blue Cortana, your your uh, opinion of uh, that you don't have to live on like old lands, you could just sail there and do archaeology. But the but the goal here, remember, is that like the question is, how do we get players to go to the old servers? How do we right. balance out the population? And yeah, for sure, this is why most players are going to the new servers. We're trying to figure out, like, as a dev, I'd be telling myself, okay, what is it exactly that is attracting players to the new land? What does a virgin land mean to new players? And then the Zetrin so far has said, to me, it means that it's untouched or that it actually appears untouched, right? Because right. untouched land just means that like a bunch of mechanics and a bunch of things in the game determines an untouched state and devs can look at that and be like, okay, we can reproduce that on the old servers. And I mean, that's as far as we've gotten one. so far. That's as far Virgin as we got. Land is only one like, thing, right? There are other things, other things that, that potentially new players are looking for. Yeah. That are stopping new players from, from so, going out. And there are things that they can't control. Like a player might say right now, this, this is one thing a player might say, I'm going to the new server because, you know, that's where the community is. I want more chance to uh, play with players, right? Well, why are the players there to begin with? 
right? That's uh, that's something a dev can't solve by saying, okay, we'll just put community over here. Like that, they can't do that. So they have to go, okay, why is the community here? What is it about these locations that they like going to? Is it the allure of the new server? What about the allure? Is it on the new server that makes them want to go there? And then they'd Part have to keep at the beginning, peeling that onion. Part about the community at the beginning is that everybody's starting off with new characters and and, and it gives the new players, especially somebody who's never played Word before, the feeling that they're going to be sort of at least at the same level-ish as most other players who are starting at the same yeah. time as them. As opposed so you're to uncovering. going on the old servers, you're mostly playing with people who've been playing for years and their skills are all way ahead of yours in different yeah. stages of the game. Okay, so let's eliminate the fact that veteran players can level up faster and that, that balance doesn't doesn't stay past the first day of a new server uh, um, first month yeah let's say first month let's say whatever okay so uh let's get rid of that whole thing where uh yes that's that's true but then what about it is true to these players See, that typical saying that make them want false, but but it, yes typical the thing is, is you're that correct it, it's not false if that's the way people feel right because yeah it's for false example, in the sense that the mechanics example, don't support it, but it's not false in the sense that people feel it. Even for us as players who have been playing this game forever, starting on the new server really revitalized our passion for the game. We would never have been playing this amount of Worm if they didn't start new servers that were fresh. Like if they started this server connected to the old one, like they said, we'll just make a new server, but it's connected to the old one. I don't think we would be streaming and I don't think we would be playing right now because of the feeling that we get when we play on a fresh new server. There's something about it that's different. But what is what is it? We're trying to pinpoint what yeah. it is that that it is, but uh, it's definitely okay, so, not. So let's invisible. say it's the, the skill. How do we eliminate the the uh, idea that, oh, these this this server's been around forever. I can't compete. I'd be interesting like the, entering this world that I can't right. deal with. I mean, at least it's, <laughs> I mean, sure. You can't compete even with the veterans who are starting here, but at least, at least it's better. But that than doesn't all solve the, the feeling. At 90 skill. All right. But it's true. Okay. So let's better. say we know and, 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 and everybody here knows, okay, well, this is like an illusion. It's an illusion. They feel this way, but we know, kind of know that it's not really uh, the truth. Veteran players will always have an advantage no matter where we go, blah, 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 all this stuff. Um, it really doesn't take that long to get to 70. It doesn't take that long to get to 90. Like, There's always going to be Darren somebody. Darren saying so, one month in we'll have 90 skill people, but but the thing is is that you it's not like one month in everybody will be 90, right? Like you go to the old servers, everybody has a 90 skill. Like everybody Okay. And one month in here, it's not going to be like that, for sure. So we, we can't change the fact that people are going to progress in this game. We can't change the fact that people right. know how to play this game, and other people right. don't, right? But how do we then take that and use it as an advantage for the old servers, or for Worm in general, but specifically in this right. case, the old server? And what basically has to happen is you have to take that, that essence of we've got skilled players we have veteran players we have new players the problem we have deemed here is that new players feel intimidated on playing with the veteran players when it's so apparent on an old server and so the devs would have to look at this and say okay then how do we take that dynamic and then say to the new players looking at the old servers i want to play on that old server because this is the case because the we have old players and new players and like and and there's something and in order to accomplish that changes and design changes would have to be made hmm. to then say to a new, new player wow there's this world let's say they implement this untouched thing the world is untouched but has history has places to go visit there's veteran players that are there that have high skill. And to me, as a new player, we'd have to change the opinion that 
that is actually really good to have old players there. And you can do that with a bunch of new systems in place that mm -hmm. make it so a veteran player to a new person has gameplay mechanics in there that would be beneficial to everybody. Right. And I'm not just talking about like something like a, a mentorship system or, or something that encourages those players to need to interact, to uh, benefit each other, that makes it turns, turns this whole situation to a positive, then into a negative. Right. Because we're looking at it like it's us versus them or it's them versus us. But that's not what Worm is about. It's about us being together. Yeah. And having the game in a, in a world appealing to as and many have people as the possible. game. Yeah. And so there's ways to do this and ways to do this, like as I was saying, that would not be uh, too abusive for alts to to accomplish and that now and the other thing that we have to if i could just throw this also into this discussion is that like there is going to come a point where the new server is no longer a new server and people are still going to be discovering the game through steam so those new players are going to come in and experience that same feeling of this server is already well developed there's so many veterans whatever the issue is that prevents people from going to those old servers is going to be there once this server is old um, and I think that the devs do need to address this to help the long-term health of the game. And so let's say they do this, right? Now we have untouched land on the old servers. Now we have uh, some sort of, uh, we get rid of that adversity between new players and old players, however they do that. And we make it so it's a positive to have new players and old players on a server. And the new players are looking at it as more of a positive than a negative. So let's say we get to that point. Is there anything else that anybody can think that would stop a new player from wanting to go to these old servers? Is there anything that can be... No, done? let's just let's just, uh, no, let's just no, let's just look at what are the things what other that are things that are going to prevent them. Right. I mean, I, I I think back to like all those new players that we encountered over the years, and I I noticed something. It was that when when you give them stuff, right? Like, let's say a new player comes in, I say, oh, you're new, uh, you must want this fifty quality armor set. That I mean, it's not so high. Fifty quality. Here you go. And uh, here's a 50 quality weapon and some 50 quality tools. Now go. Um, I find that when you do that, the player doesn't continue playing, right? Because now what are they going to do? They're like, OK, well, I got everything that I need. What should I do now? Uh, I don't need anything, so <laughs> it doesn't seem like there's much motivation to play anymore. It's like, I was going to make myself that 20 quality hammer, but uh, now that I have a 50 one, I don't need to do that, And right? like. There is an element of once you have these old established servers, there's just an abundance of things. So the new player doesn't feel like they need to do anything anymore to survive or to progress or. So I don't, I don't know what the solution to this is, but I think that that's one of the things that. Okay. Might be influenced. So. <laughs> this could be uncovered a lot of ways. And if we're just going to say this is how the game is it's not going to change uh then yes we, we're going to have problems and we can't and the solution isn't like typical veterans just need to be less generous uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but stop, stop i helping. feel like if like as a like a developer so we're looking at it from like let's say game design uh if you were i mean if we were and this is to everybody. We were all the owners of Worm, and we had to solve... We were tasked to solve that problem. How would you solve it? Hmm. Would yeah. you do something drastic, negative? Item decay. The elimination of items. Would you do that? Would you do something else? 
Sipiku says, the solution is to add periodical fun content patches to make people play for the new stuff, but you need a, pay full, a paid full dev team for that, yeah. I mean, that would be great. C yeah. Consistent content, sure. I mean, as it is, they are doing a decent job considering the size of the dev team at new stuff. But, yeah. <laughs> we would just tell the players just be suck it up. <laughs> That's your solution, <laughs> Griffo. Uh, right. As they quit. <laughs> so the problem is that they just... Um, the new players aren't going to stick around for it if nothing changes. Well, okay... Let's let's go back a little bit because you're you're to reestablish what the exact issue here is. Your issue is that uh, a new player comes into the game, gets items from a veteran that are high level, and then determines to themselves, "I'm done. I don't it's know like, what to do now." It's that feeling, like the same thing that we were talking about. I got about rid of this you feeling. Finish making your deed, you make your tools, you make your buildings, you you finish with your deed and everything like that, and then the player's like, "Okay, now what?" And that's okay, so the time that they stop playing. Now, let's look at this now from you, a new player's you, lens, okay? Not from a veteran lens or uh, an alt lens or all this stuff. So let's and so I'm gonna I'm gonna say something that's gonna be controversial. So how about a new player comes in and the chain and the and 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 the, the problem is, let's say we give them a pickaxe and that pickaxe is high level and they're able, uh, it's very very good to use huge like amazing pickaxe but these players are you know one mining they they don't know how to use a pickaxe they don't know how to use yeah, like a 70 like this quality thing. pickaxe or whatever yeah well, well why don't you change so that? why don't, why don't you, you say, say the new player yeah. gives them a one quality 80 coc pickaxe yeah I mean, so it's the same kind of thing. would it change? So two things could happen here in this situation. We can make it so that player can't actually use that. They're just not skilled enough to use that. It's too good to use. Oh, would fine. that solve the problem of the player now having this pickaxe and going, wow, I've got this awesome thing. And, but all I need to do is accomplish this before I'm allowed to use that. Would that make them stay into the game and try to accomplish that would that solve the problem of veterans giving new players lots of stuff right so you can't equip 50 quality gear unless your skill is like whatever it does like level. don't worry about the actual mechanics of it we're more worried yeah. about how the They'll new player would take that because we can they, they can make that for sure lots they can they can implement that a number of ways it can't be as simple as just like gain this level up and then you're good to go like it'll so be somehow, more complex than that somehow earn the ability to use okay it's one of two things so that or making it so they can use the item but it's much less effective it doesn't uh have the ability to to utilize certain things about that pickaxe because they're just not skilled to do that they could still use it, but it's like still crappy to them. Right, right. I see what you're saying. So now that also would eliminate the like veterans just giving them all of these like really high level things. It could also potentially eliminate uh, power grinding as well. Okay, so Sipiku points at Papa Smite. What game? in the genre has solved that particular issue or attempted it partially or successfully? That is a good question. Well, it's a good question in the sense that there's not that many games like Worm <laughs> that has, has this problem. <laughs> has Eve addressed this issue? I don't know because we don't play Eve. And, and, and I would say it this way because even though this particular problem of these high level items so is there a game that you can create an item and then you take that item and then you can make it really really high level the same item so two picks equally equal pickaxes created in the same way and then you take like, one and then you make it really really good through 
a type of system like the quality level system and then take that that item and give it to a new player and they have the benefits of it how many games are like that it doesn't uh, it doesn't even have to be like that though the issue shows up whenever you think of games where there's twinking involved yeah right but the Uh, solution in that sense is different than a solution worm would need to uh, do. Right. Because the solution be in EverQuest, for example, is just like, let's make items, we can't drop them. Let's make items yeah. that yeah. Uh, have a level requirement. Let's make items, and actually, like, sure, that solved the problem for them, but that would it, 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 ruin it didn't the game the same problem, for Worm. Though. It, it didn't say the same, it didn't create the same problem because people actually loved twinking, right? Like if, if that high level person <laughs> gave you a really high level item, you that made you want to play more, right? But in this game, it's like the opposite effect. Somebody gives you all but this high level stuff, and then you don't want to play more because the reason is because the main goal in this game is to make all that high level stuff. And if you've given it, then you that goal is out the window. And now what? What are you going to do now? Yeah, and I mean we have that. That's just the way that the game works. So that that's Worm. Right. That's what we love about Worm, actually. We love about the Worm that everything's uh-huh. droppable. Everything is able to be created. Everything's able to be traded. We don't have any of those restrictions. Mm-hmm. We don't want to put those restrictions into the game. Right? We still want to be able to give a new player stuff. But it's how do we... Says- this is a permanent world and stuff will accumulate given enough time anyway. That's another thing yeah. I want addressed in this game. I think that they could do a lot more to make things not accumulate as much. Right. That's a, a, that's another topic that's entirely. In this topic, topic, it's like not that we have the items. We have the items in the game. We have lots and abundance of items. This is going to happen. This is already happening on the new server. The question is, how do we make a new player not feel intimidated by all those new items or not feel like they want to stop playing even after they obtain the new items from a veteran or whatever. And that's what we're trying to solve. Could we, would they, would they feel still the need to progress even when they have these items? How do we solve that problem? There's a lot of things in this game where that's already solved. They have a lot of dirt. Let's say we give them 5,000 dirt. Let's say we give them 5,000 rock shards or 5,000 stone bricks or whatever, they wouldn't look at that and then say, they wouldn't look at that and say, oh, I've got 5,000 stone bricks. I got to stop playing. Like, I feel so bad. Uh, I feel like I've already reached the end, right? So we don't have problems with those items. We have problems with, like, items, I don't know, if we could give them a full set of armor at the highest level, a full set of of, of, of harvesting items at the highest level or the lowest level with the most TOC or whatever, we feel that would stop players from continuing playing, even if they had these items. That's what we're trying to solve. We're not saying we have to give them anything. <laughs> We're saying that players are being given stuff already. How do we right. make it so even if that happens, they don't feel discouraged? I think that's the situation we're trying to solve this scenario. Uh, and b- b- because, and remember, the whole idea of this conversation is we solve that scenario, then players feel better about going to the old servers where there's a ton of items there and more than likely they're going to be given those items right most want to start on their own you're totally right and most don't want to accept things but there's then those people who don't even realize that they don't want to accept things right so they'll accept them because the person's being nice and it's like oh thanks like you're giving me all this stuff this is awesome and then it's like only later do they realize, like, now I have all this stuff. Now what am I going to do? It's not and for everything either, right? It's not black and white. Like, let's say, right. let's say I never wanted to be a leather worker. 
I'm then oh somebody gives me a saddle that's high quality I gladly accept it because I have no right. plans to be a leather so this is just like it's a very specific to uh, the player or a new player in general and that and the items in general would change depending on the, the player mm -hmm. and and th th I, I, this would be a lot harder to solve I would say mm-hmm because it's very like we, specific to a profession. We're not profession. doing this optimally. Because we are 100% not optimally. You're I don't know how there. low I'm you're trying to get. Here. No, no, no. I mean to say, I feel like I should be doing the mining. Oh, I see. You should be doing the digging. Only because my <laughs> mining is high enough that I probably will succeed more at that. All right. I will start digging. I'm figuring we'll just get rid of the dirt that's here. There's not much left. And uh, <laughs> and look at it, how low you want to go. Like the rock is going to dip down over here where I am over here somewhere. Or maybe mm -hmm. not, actually, I don't know. There's rock right up <laughs> here. We might even want to uncover these tiles over here in this corner. But I just want to see the uncovered, the exact place that we're going to put this chessboard. Yeah. Agreed. And we might need to do some digging on the north side a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> yeah. How low are we wanting to go? That's a good question. I don't know. Don't know yet. <laughs> until, for me, it's until Adam is comfortable. Because <laughs> it would be 100% fine just flattening this whole thing out. I know. I knew that you'd probably want to just drop dirt. <laughs> <laughs> but Adam wants it to be as natural as possible for this temporary chessboard. Oh, and Pyro, that's okay. Um, <laughs> I know it looks like a massive excavation, but this is quite minor, I'd say. We'll, it will not take us more than a couple days to finish this, I think. Yeah. Another, and Sipiku, you uh, say what you're saying. They should let us play as horses, too. Newbies will catch up in skill as if, if all the vets are busy trying to mate with one another and grind skill. But, and you're saying that as, as like a joke, but that's actually an amazing point that I've mentioned so many times over the years. All you have to do is add variety in, into this game, like variety in everything like, yeah. uh, horizontal level variety. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden anybody can catch up so much quicker because it's not a linear progression anymore. And this goes to like, uh, I, I mentioned a system where, where items in general could have multiple different, like a, as a, let's say a carpenter and I'm making a spindle or, or a mallet. And then all of a sudden at some certain point in this mallet's life cycle, as a master carpenter, I can then change that to, to do a very specific spe specialized role. Right. Which is different like than other mal other mallets, houses, let's say for example. Yeah, and then oh, as opposed to other mallets that will also do different specialized role. And now all of a sudden, one mallet's not good for everything. And now we're doing this horizontal progression where now players are needing to to have different items to answer different problems. And and now you have all this variety and interesting time spent as a player to try to determine which items which version of items that they want that meet their requirements for what they're doing and then you're spending a lot of time doing that instead of just the one linear progression and now it uh, it, it extends the amount of time that a player would would want to play and makes it so new players can come in and would be have the ability to then create these specialized items much faster at lower levels and still feel like they want to progress more and there's always something more that you could do something more that you can accomplish and that's it's a different topic altogether i guess it's just how do we keep players around longer the whole concept of now what now what now what yeah. right and and yeah. we've talked about this for years like now what 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 could we do now and uh really there's lots of stuff they could do <laughs> right 
Yeah, I mean, it, everybody reaches that now what stage. I mean, even we did. Like, we would keep ourselves going by creating projects, right? Like, we'll create, like, let's do a labyrinth. And it's like, we have this massive goal that will last us years. And we keep, you know. Yeah. And then when anyway. we finish it, it's like, now what, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I definitely feel that. And I feel like that needs to be addressed at some point or another, especially now that Worm has this larger population. And that population's new and they're at the beginning of their journey, but they need to start working on that stuff now so that by the time people get there, it's in place. Right. Right. And, and Deso, you're saying uh, that Worm is not a typical MMORPG. It's a sandbox with little to no goals to chase. People are bugged, but not having by not having a goal. I would, I would alter that sentence a little bit in the sense that people don't have any goals. It's that people uh, create their own goals to chase based on the mechanics. And there that's why... have a hard time with that, right? Yeah, and then that's why... Um, then, I mean, this answer is good. That's why villages work and friendships work because everybody's doing their own goals. Everybody's doing their own thing and uh, being able to interact with the different people. And, oh, Zenith Stone... Zenith Stono, thanks so much for that sub, for that prime sub. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying things. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah, pe people have their own goals and they're able to specialize in their own thing and then they interact in an alliance or, or a village. And uh, and everything's... That's why it works. I mean, that's why it originally works. And, uh, yeah, eventually you're going to get to the point where it's like, now what? And, uh, that's a topic for another day, I would say. Yeah. So chess, that's right. Dezo right now, our goal is the chess board 100%. And how many others, is there anybody else where their goal is also building a giant chess board right now? Or is that just us? If there is, there's got to be very few players right now doing that. And then that's what that's the brilliance of Worm. And j Popper, you're saying, do we actually know how many new players there are versus old players making new characters? Um, I'm sure there's a lot of both. I definitely know there's a lot of new players, though. Uh, I don't know the numbers, though, but there are. There's for sure both. Like, there's for sure yeah, both. There's both. Right? It 100% got the player, like new players to discover worms so much. You can see that. We don't know the numbers, obviously. Uh, the devs wouldn't even know the numbers. They would have to have really good analysis tools to determine whether the same people are creating characters or whether there's new players. Huh. But what we can do is say, look at just on Twitch right now. Uh, when Twitch first started, you had more players streaming worm than ever in its life cycle ever even by now, even now. a mile and then even though that has trickled down it has made it so even yeah even now there's so many more streamers which it's is just so amazing to see go to twitch and more than likely somebody's streaming it yeah right. which was not the case before <laughs> which is definitely not the case so there's definitely new players around you know uh, Sifaku says, Buddha says he's working on an, on an ever-expanding server that would basically have no borders, so people can write off civilization and have the new land to experience in the same universe as everyone else. That sounds really cool. I wonder if that's on Worm Unlimited. Yeah, that's like Minecraft, I guess. Procedurally generated world that just keeps going. That would be pretty cool. And what is this with the um, emotes? Is it that if somebody subscribes with Twitch Prime, it gives everybody emotes? I don't know. Is that a new Limited thing? Limited one-time only emote. Huh. I never knew about this. <laughs> Griffo, your goal is to rid the game of seals. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome goal. <laughs> Michio had the goal of, of a tortoise sanctuary and the his his limping troll pub we had cat spurs over there with her giant goal of or 
her goal of getting the breeding farm and then a giant kingdom going. And then, oh my oh, god. Oh, Deathwind. Oh, Thank Deathwind. You, so <laughs> you have gifted 55 subs in this channel. That, man. Thank now that's so that's, in, insane. that's insanity. <laughs> Thank Griffith. you so much. Wait a minute. How did Griffith get his sub? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think he's what? in the chat. <laughs> you, you must be in the chat somewhere. <laughs> I don't even know where. That's weird. <laughs> he's going to be questioning that all day now. Thanks, Deathwind. <laughs> so look. He's like secretly in the channel somewhere. He doesn't even know. Oh, thank you so much. Oh. Deathwind is roll height? Right. Or <laughs> no, he's spending money, so he must be not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Deathwind. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, Griffin, yeah and Scuffgrim's like, every game has a now what? Every game is so oh, true. Every game. game has a now Thanks what for the, moment. Thanks for the follow. Right. Agreed. Every game. But the, the, the thing is, like, every game solution to that would be different. Or let's that's that's wrong. A lot of games are like World on uh, World of Warcraft or EverQuest type of thing, and those games, the now what is very similar. But Linewood Gaming. Oh yeah, thank you so much for the follow, guys. Worms now what moment is very different than I say a lot of games would be, and Worm has tackled it in a lot of ways over the years a lot, and a lot of different ways so we could list just some of them yep. like their their solution to the whole now what moment is was uh was epic epic was oh, okay now what well here's yeah. the another one they is jekyll things, yeah uh but, what but was the know, other one they have uh yeah challenge challenge then there was yeah. I, i'm talking about the the variety of different things that Worm has tried to continue the, the player are, base from keep going. Yeah, the other thing that they've added is a lot of extra features, such as multi-story, mm -hmm. really expanded the now what. Like if you had your deed and every, like before the multi-story, and yeah, it was like game just filled up with one, one, you know, one-story houses, and all of a sudden multi-story comes out. Well, that just like now there there goes the next two years of your life. You have to. <laughs> modify all these houses now um so game features i think is the way that worm should continue handling it they should continue expanding and making things more epic so uh, we, we've got two different things or maybe three you got the game mechanics that solve the now what problem you've got the items adding additional items in the game trying to adjust that uh and then you've got new skills in the game that could address mm -hmm. that like archaeology or expanding any of this uh, professions that we currently have <laughs> typical you're crying for the loss of the auto roofs <laughs> yeah or i would say more instead of the auto roofs it would be for me the ability to have uh crooked houses i but miss I'll be those honest. Way back in the day, we always had this massive list of things that we wanted to see happen in the game, right? Like, we 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 had we always had this massive list, and I almost feel like they've checked everything off that list, right? Like we haven't it's had true. a segment in the while where we're like, okay, what what is the next big feature that we want to see? We always had that segment. We've always talked okay. about those things. Let's have that segment right now. Everybody, what is right. the next big thing you want to see in Worm? Right. What is the next big thing that we What should they work on next? next? What is it that one thing that goes, this will make Worm amazing? <laughs> Capes. <laughs> Auction house, okay. That's I like that one. Map making is 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 good. I definitely <laughs> want to see that. Better creature AI. There it is. That's I'm on that boat. 
model updates. You know, like a lot of these things are great and would be good for the game, but they also all right, wouldn't now provide that listed, thing that's gonna. gonna okay, we listed all longevity. like everybody's listing all the things that they want to see, listing everything. Now, now I I say okay, here's the scenario. You are now the dev of the game, not the dev. Mm-hmm. You're now the owner of Worm. Owner, yeah. And you're looking at it like this is my game. Which one of these would you put into the game that will attract the most players? This is really hard. You you have to put yourself away from the player's perspective. So like you're no longer a player. Like you don't play this game, but you own it, and your goal is the longevity of the game and the profitability of the game. You know. So what do you change now? Workbenches for different jobs? That would be good. I want that, personally. We've talked about that, yeah. Because it, it would it would add a lot of things that you would have to do to... Personally, it just adds immersion into the game. Immersion. The immersion that you'd want and feature sets that no, that don't exist anymore. And I don't want to get into that, but... but... Sipaku is bringing up the suggestion that he brought up before. Crafter Priest for 50% more premium price. <laughs> So charge people be to nice. allow to priest their main. <laughs> Farming mm. improvement. Farming improvement. And this is the challenge that I don't think I've a heard game ask for like Worm has. Before. Right? Because there's so much cool stuff that can get added to Worm. But mm. what is it? What are the things that they should be working on versus the things that might be nice to have? Goblins that bonding allows... together, making a miniature village, if left alone, becoming really strong. Okay, who said that? I love that idea. Who said we, that? We've, we've hashed <laughs> that, that idea out many times. Yeah, Zetnorking. <laughs> we planned this whole thing out. Actually, this is this goes along to what I wanted to talk about next because yes we okay. goblins and trolls we've, yeah, we've talked about this we've talked about this many times in the past where we would want to see goblins or trolls have personality get grouped together build little villages that only they can build which then players would have to go and raid and kill and get like cool things from not just items yeah. but the ability to craft certain things or the ability to then uh take certain things that would then apply to their gameplay after. Uh, really cool. Totally. Sounds but like a lot of AI improvements, but yes, that's definitely... This is... I, I, I watched a tiny bit, as much as I could, of the stream this morning. Of... Uh, Retro. Retro. Retro's uh, official stream. Hmm. And the question came up, which ha- comes up all the time, which is... And I'm hoping that I, I wrote this down. Somebody said, uh, combat. Is combat being worked on? We, we want a new combat system. Because Worm's combat system is not great. Uh, they also said, we want dungeons. Are dungeons coming into the game? And the answer to that... I can't remember exactly what Retro said, was essentially just like, no, because dungeons are a feature of of other games. This game is more about (laughs) freedom and the ability to create your own dungeon. Like, if you want a dungeon, just create your own dungeon sort of thing. I can't stand that response because then why put Rift, right? Like... But then the like question it, is like, well, rifts almost seem like a dungeon. That could be determined right. as dungeon-like, I guess, which is it's not a dungeon, but if, it is if willing a to put combat rifts, feature. If they're willing to put in rifts, then they shouldn't shut down an idea that's similar to that by saying yeah. we would never jackal, put anything like that into this game. The Sorbic Jackal was mentioned as well. They said, okay, Jackal is... I mean, it doesn't help new players, but... They could okay, do that so, again, so, I guess. 
Rifts are to bring like... new medals to PvE servers, yes. But they're also there to like provide an engaging activity that are re that's rewarding and give materials. Lots of different materials come from Rifts and yeah, lots of it... items. They just you break need to down... add more of that. Let's break down what, why did that player say, are we <laughs> bringing, are we putting, like, what we want dungeons, like, our dungeons coming to the game. Why would they even say that? Because what does a dungeon do for that player? But yeah, like, at all. Like, what, what does it do? It gives them something to do. Something gives them something to, to do. Towards. Something to work towards. Gives yeah. them... Goal, something to work towards let's say okay so it gives them something to work towards and it gives them something to, to do beef up my or a fun thing to do so that i can go and take on that goblin village that's over there because they drop a cool right. looking hat that, that i really want so one reason why <laughs> they wouldn't want uh dungeons so when they heard, when retro heard dungeons in his mind he was thinking uh mines Right. So, and one reason why you wouldn't want to do that is because uh, that then you're basically restricting that area so that people cannot mine in that place. So you're basically saying, "Come to our game. Everything is moldable. You can do anything." And then they come in, and there's like a game mechanic stopping players because an NPC dungeon is there. But that's the same. We'll go for rifts i can't deed there right now because there's a riff happening right now but they i think they were okay with that because it's temporary okay. now so the the dungeons can be temporary they can spawn in. so that's why destroyed. yeah that's why <laughs> the whole idea of like goblins or goblin camps getting building that and troll camps is exactly what this game needs Typical, you say the problem you see with the goblin village idea is a lack of land for it, but the the same argument would go for rifts, right? Like, right. You just make it so that they're small, not that thanks big. Thanks for the uh, bits, Griffo. Remove all the seals. Remove, remove, remove. Azorbic <laughs> <laughs> oh. says they could have portal spawns that could teleport you to dungeon. And once it's complete, the portal goes away. Uh, I'm not, I, personally, I'm not a big fan of that idea. Only because it breaks immersion a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, it's I like, would say... Like, uh, instances, instancing, it's not... Okay, Worm is not a game where... Traditional dungeons or its intended goal would fit into the world of worm because right? the original concept of dungeons is that you go in there it's a combat kind of progression where you would it's designed to take out mobs eventually lead the good dungeons lead to let's say a, a boss you kill it and the, the goal is to come out of it with items or that you didn't have before materials resources. Um, typical, you were saying. That's not how worm works. The problem I see with your goblin village idea is the lack of. Oh wait, wait. wait. Harmony and melody is mostly full of deeds. I, I don't think it's actually full of deeds. I think it's just that the coast is full of deeds. That's right. true. I knew if I got that right before. Now, they wouldn't need that much space. Like, I mean, look at where we are now. We're like, oh, right. it's full of deeds, but. It could be right over there. <laughs> it could be right over there. And it doesn't have to be big. Like, it could be tiny. Um, but a, a one, the way that worm one should work is that you should see these these groups going through... Well, the way that I'd like to see it work is that you could see these groups of, of goblins and stuff. And let's say they're grouped up in the sense that if you wanted to take on one, you could. But you would have to take on the other ones, too. So it wouldn't be something that you would just go in and start killing. And then you would actually watch them building their place, this little tiny little place, not big. Mm -hmm. And like then a couple one by one huts and things like that. And at any time, any players can come in and kill them if they want to in the middle of them doing it. That's possible. Uh, yeah. And 
if they don't and they end up like building this little mini place, then the player could have to go into there and uh, group up and take it out. Not just take it out, but uh, take out the land as well. Make it really easy to destroy. Not hard. Not like the rest of the worm. Sipiku says, why not let people make dungeons make dungeons and play the beasts inside them and gain rewards based on the dungeon clearer's deaths. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you take on the role of that lava fiend and you go around trying to kill all the newbies that are coming. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's a completely different type of gameplay. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> you would play five months premium <laughs> monthly to be able to play as a metal vein and taunt the poor souls. <laughs> Sod trying to, Sod, trying to t tunnel through me in local chat. Oh, man. Anyway, so could it coexist yeah. on one I'd, on one piece of land? It could. It could, you could have little mini areas, not that many, that could do that. So that's one thing that uh, I think would be pretty cool. And of course, uh, Baron Tor, you're saying you'd want a separate item, item island that has that sort of thing. That would be interesting too. But remember, now you're basically creating a brand new game that we can then go to and... Right. Uh, and play I don't on. want to make it integrated Which into they the did. current game that we have. Again, they did many times. Jackal. Like Jackal. Challenge. Like Challenge. And like Epic, where they decided, let's create essentially a brand new way of playing. And see what people think. Could they do that then, where it's like something where you just sail over with your main character? They could. It's just something they haven't done. But it's not out of the realm of possibility. Does it, would it help? Would people like it? Because now you have to stop. The, the problem with all of those other things, and the problem with this one, is that they would have to stop what they're doing and then go do that. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you're not saying we're going to make all of we're going to make this new gameplay for the players. You're essentially trying to make this gameplay for different kinds of players in hopes that you attract them to the game to do it because you want both areas to be populated with players playing. That would, that would essentially be the goal. How far am I going here? Uh, that's good. Just keep going towards the north from there. I see. So just to let you know, uh, we're not going to be able to stream too late today. Yeah, I it's will been have to be going shortly ish. It's been a few hours past one. Actually, it's been over three hours already. I know Adam has a um, commitment out of the game that we'd have to go to. So let's let's take a look. <laughs> Let's take a look at our land. I know this is becoming a longer project than you wanted it to be, but I think that we can get it done by the next week. You think so? Really so think let's look at our oh, yeah. chessboard right now as I look. Okay. Our chessboard is now a giant rock surface. What exactly is the plan, though? How so low... Do you want it to go? go? Let's <laughs> let's look at let's just look at the uh, the level that we want to obtain, and that's what we're going to need to do. We're probably not going to go as low as I want to go because I I kind of want to go low low, but uh, I think that at at the least we should probably go. Um, let's see here, how far like down this high? Eight sixteen. Where are you? Let me see. Because this side of the land is almost... Right. 
I might want to go like okay. This is the lower than this. Least. This is the this is the highest. These flat tiles here. Yeah. I would say that's the highest I possibly would accept. So if you want to do that, and just call it a day, then that's fine. Uh, in order to do that, we would have to uncover these tiles here. So we can mine out, mine down these corners. Love your logic there, Sipiku. In conclusion, Worm's Draw is the fact that the players can fully interact with the world and shape it. So the next big thing should be to let the players be the world. <laughs> yeah. And the Adam can and the mystery face. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's, kind of, that's really funny. So what do you think? Make it to these flat tiles here? I mean, you, yeah. Well, there or lower, that's really my feeling. I'm great with that. So just okay, pick so a corner. Let's make that as a goal. Pick a like corner these, these that's... Ones. So this These corner. Um, we're gonna have to dig that down. So let's uh, let's see how far does this flat border go. I, I think I made all of this flat. This one that I'm walking along, uh, mostly flat. It actually slopes down here. So yeah, and 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 Zoda in there. Complete combat overall is needed. That is. I think a given at this point. Yeah. Hundred percent. And so the real question at this point isn't that they need to do it, but what should it look like? Yeah. What does it look like and how does that fit into the worm world? And then what I think we're gonna find, this is just my thoughts, is that they're going to input this new combat system whatever it ends up being and we're not going to be happy not because of the system itself but because we also were hoping for a complete overhaul of the way animals work in this game mm -hmm. right because a complete <laughs> that that would have to be a tandem thing that they would have to tackle at the same time not yeah. just combat uh, mechanics, which is what I feel we're going to end up getting. I really hope that the devs look at it in a more holistic way, in a similar way that Titch did with the cooking system, right? She didn't just say, let's overhaul cooking. She basically said, oh, anything, any skill or any action that a player is going to do that is even remotely connected to cooking we're going to address that as well. And it extended so far out into the game, into the far reaches of the game, that people are feeling the effects of that, even if they never touch cooking. They yeah. need to do that for, for combat. It's true. They, they need to take into account systems like, like a goblin village or whatever, or uh, the way that people interact using the combat system with the environment. Yes. Even the system that I didn't talk about today, but I've talked about for very many years, eight years, which is essentially giving players the ability to take on uh, or to unlock their own unique boss fights. I haven't talked about it. I, I won't bring it up today, In but the, while, yeah. it would be <laughs> systems like that that would yeah. then with the combat overhaul be able to provide us with the holistic vision of combat that we really I think players are really looking for totally anyway so this is where we're at unfortunately Adam does have to go uh, <laughs> but thank yeah, you so much you. everybody for joining yeah. today uh it's been really, I don't know, relaxing just to be able to just play Worm and less about, uh, especially if you had a, a, a stressful week at work or anything like that. It's it's so much better 
Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Let's take a look if there's anybody that we can just secretly raid. Let's take a look. Anybody knows any anybody interesting playing right now? You know what we're going to do? You know what we're going to do. And thank you so much <laughs> for uh, activating our faces one last time before we're gone. <laughs> Except uh, my the Viking will, will take a little bit of time. But thank you, everybody, for joining. Let's raid. What do you guys think of raiding uh, Fabricant? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, we have to raid Fabricant. All right, and let's go over there. And everybody, if you want to join in on the raid, this will be really fun. We'll go there and we'll just uh, everybody say at least one thing to get his chat kind of crazy. <laughs> All right, so I will raid him in, in one second. Let me just see what, what he's up to. It looks like he's sailing on his gnar towards something so let's figure out what that's all about thank you so much guys and we'll see you guys next week yep have a good one <laughs> have a good week